All right. And we are live. The last word with Lord Cognito and Ebontis. Friday Night Campfire. What is going on, sir? Do we have like, do we have a guest? We do have a guest, a returning guest, an awesome gentleman here who lives in the world of Max Triumph score, always aspiring to be top in the Destiny world. There's Ooh. not too much left. I think you might have one or two things that you saw you were working on, but we'll cover that here in a sec. Um, but yeah, it's been an interesting week. Lots of stuff to talk about. Lots of controversial topics. So yeah, it's definitely going to be an interesting one. All right, let's introduce the man. <laughs> so welcome to The Last Word, episode number 104. It's another glorious Friday. We're back in front of the campfire for some more looter shooter discussion. I'm extremely excited about our special guest, so we're going to get right into it. I want to introduce a Lord whom is an absolute pleasure to stop by the Destiny Campfire for some informative discussion. Not only is this Lord one of our most passionate and hardcore members of the community, but by earning every Guardian Games Triumph, has absolutely earned the right to take a break from Season of the Worthy. <laughs> Introducing our favorite Guardian from Clan Concern and one of the best IT guys in the game. Fellow friend of Fireteam Chat, fellow Warlock main, and the most elite Xbox controller user on PC. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Live from California and making his return into the realm of the last word. My man, Lord Tease and Teddy, how we doing, sir? Um, dude, I, that intro was even better than the last one. I don't know how you talk <laughs> yourself. Uh, I'm, I'm doing all right, you know, hanging in there. I hope hopefully you guys are doing the same. And thank you yes, again sir. for having me. This is This is always fun to... You know, talk about something we're very passionate about. So, absolute pleasure to have you, brother. Good to have you back, man. Got a lot to talk about, a lot to catch yeah. up, a lot going on in the world, man. But otherwise than that, like, have you been um, playing Destiny again? I know you. We talked offline. You took a break a little bit. I think you took a break around the same time I took a break. So, I mean, how how's that going with Destiny in particular? I uh, this season has been obviously a little lackluster, um, yes. to say the least. Yes. Um, I've mm -hmm. been playing very on and off the last month. I got really busy, so I. I kind of haven't been playing as much as I wanted to, but I still would just jump on to do whatever was relevant at, at the time. So um, when Almighty became available for the title, when Fel the Fel Winter's Quest uh, became yes. sort of available and then not available and then available again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I just get on when I need to. And uh, this weekend I'm actually going to knock out Conquer. I'll probably do it after this podcast is, is my, nice. my goal to, awesome. nice. to knock that out. I only have the two two more left. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard uh, Tree of Probabilities boss, boss Room is uh, dicey. I watched a couple of people really? there working on it. Yeah, I watched, uh, it was Cognito and Scarrow, uh, no, not Cognito, uh, Pyro and Scarrow, both Pyro? were working on, uh, what was the first one, Broodhold, they worked on mm -hmm. that one, and then it's all up in the rotation, so you can pick any of the ones you need to work on, and then I watched some Tree of Probabilities, hours, just hours working on that one, so, mm -hmm. it's just the dicey room, so, I just nice. wanted to ask you, actually, since you're talking about Conquer and stuff, um, mm -hmm. I know you. I know why you do it. You're going for the title. You're going for the completionist for sure. sure. Mm -hmm. um, is that where you continue to want to see content go? I'm watching those guys just like hide in little corners and do these certain things. Like I watched um, Exodus Crash. Same thing. I saw some people just stand on a box strat like type thing. So is that where you would like to see content to go? Or is it just to a point of like it's hard just to be mean? Like I wondered what your thoughts on those have been so far. Because I really mm -hmm. haven't dove in. But looking at like 12 modifiers seems daunting but if you're just apparently good to go you seem to knock them out so i was curious um in general i i don't necessarily like the grandmaster nightfalls i mm -hmm. see what they were going for mm -hmm. um i think the thing that kind of so the part that i got really salty about um was when they announced contests being enabled for it um because yeah. i had prepped uh, very heavily at the beginning of this Ooh. season uh during season nine uh for all this i stacked I, I, I stacked a lot of bounties yeah. um, and then when and then we were playing super hard me and, me and a bunch of clan mates to basically go as high as we possibly could in order to you know have as much advantage as possible and then they announced contest and that put a really big damper on like the six weeks of effort we had to put in yeah. um, but then it came out and we started playing them and they weren't that bad like yeah you gotta you gotta play a certain way but I mm -hmm. I played D1, and yeah, that's what yeah. we did in D1. Like, yeah. you just sat in a corner somewhere, and you yeah, shot yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, It's just funny and, to see them try and get away from that now. It's like, all right, so we're going to sit here with these two Izanagis and this crit thing, or mm -hmm. everybody seems to need Ariana's Val, which is kind of sucks for the people who miss Shadowkeep, because that's, yeah. that's a brutal one right now. If you don't have that gun, that's pretty hard on some of these, I've heard. Yeah. Um, but it's, 
I I wouldn't say they're unfair. I mm -hmm. I think they actually did quite a good job of balancing the content. Like they mm -hmm. are difficult, but they're not like like I feel like some of the other things they've done. It's like the content's very unfair, and you just you have to play this like very specific way. That mm -hmm. being said, for all the grandmasters, you do have to play a specific way and have your loadouts very optimized. But right. um, once you understand what you're going up against, it's actually not that bad. Um, do I like the title? No, I won't put the title on. I won't use it. Um, I do like the concept of that title, and as well as Flawless, because it's in the same boat, where um, yeah. they will be available every season, but the requirements will shift or change depending yes. on uh, what for for Conquer it's the strikes, and then for uh, Trials they haven't exactly said what will what will change. But uh, I, I like that idea because then at least it it gives other players who maybe aren't as hardcore dedicated to to chase it after the yeah. fact. Um, but it's mainly just a check mark for me at this point. It's like, well, it's it's, it's the last title I don't have, and mm -hmm. I, wow. I've I've started this weird tradition that I regret doing uh, back in season of opulence, where at the end of every season I have to get all the triumphs that were Ooh. like I had to get max triumph score, um, which I currently do have. I just don't have the title because they're all worth zero. So it's <laughs> which uh, I, oh that bugs yeah. the hell out of me. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. I will. I, that's another thing I'm torn on, but I won't get into that. That's that's. <laughs> That's just like a weird nitpick thing. It's all good. Yeah, man. No, that's that's what's up, man. So um, as far as like I said, I know you did that. I be mean, okay. When I saw the, the Guardian games, when I was just like, God bless his soul, because there is no <laughs> I, way. I went pretty I, hard on that, yeah, bro. That that bro, it was just so many bounties, and then like I looked at uh, you went eleven for eleven on that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he yeah, he knocked yeah. that. Out. I, I knocked I, it out I, the I, first three days. Oh, okay, I did it much longer. I was like, I did it, but damn, three days? Nope. I uh, yeah, I I wanted to get Ooh, it done. Did as you fast delete as the characters to get three? Nope. You, that, nope. you were just like wow. as soon as I possible just, type thing. I I uh, after day two, I I basically did the math and was like, okay, I I have to do it on all three characters, and I have to hope that day three, the other medals that hadn't popped up at that point pop up, mm -hmm. and they did. Thankfully, they were all in like a, a cycle, um, mm -hmm. and so I just I played a lot in three days, a, a disgusting amount of time, and then I put the game down. I was like, I'm not touching this game anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sounds very familiar to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that being said, I like Air Apparent a lot. Um, yes. I, th I think the gun That's is very cool. It. Very, it's That's very unique, it. very Destiny, and I, I yes. was kind of glad that I got it like a day before everyone else got it, because nice. um, going to Crucible and hitting people with that was pretty well, funny. It, it, uh, it's you guys that terrorized me. <laughs> That's what that you. I'm glad you said that. That's what motivated me to get it because I saw obviously I saw the initial reviews and most people were looking at it from a PVE perspective. And I'm like, okay, it's cool, chain gun, blah blah blah. But literally, I forgot. I'm gonna say I was playing comp. And it was, uh, you know, survival, 4v4, like, you know, no lives on either side. You know, it's, it's down to them, have, the opposing team having two, and it was just me. But I've got my Nova Warp charged, and I'm ready to come around the corner. So they, I guess one of the guys was over there by heavy, but I'm like, I don't care. It doesn't matter. I got my Nova Warp. I'll just, you know, blink and whatever. Yeah. So he shoots. I blink. Poof. <laughs> one dies, and the other one doesn't die. And he's got this blue aura around him. I'm like, what is going on? So I'm like, all right. Poof again. And he stands there, tanks it, and shoots me. And I'm like, yo, that's... And it says air apparent. I'm like, no, I got to get this guy. <laughs> <laughs> that did it for me, man. I was like, I must, I cannot have anybody else without this gun because that is a powerful ability, man. Especially yeah. at PvP, for sure. It's it's a fun gun. I, I think I think if anything's to be said about Guardian Games, that was kind of the highlight of it. Yes. Um, yes. It was, mm -hmm. it was, it's a, it's a very destiny gun. And oh, I think that's, yeah. Yeah. that's, no, that's I what think made that it one was a nice addition for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's been an interesting week in yes. two and mo more than a couple weeks now, actually. So mm -hmm. we do have access to our shotgun of choice, which will be the shotgun that you'll probably see in PVP for approximately uh, nine months <laughs> and three weeks and counting. Mm -hmm. I would imagine CB. Great. Thank you for tuning in. Ow! Previous guest. Oh, What's the up, young sir? Goat. What's up, yeah. TV? Uh, so we have access to that, but yeah, we've got a little bit of a a story since uh, between the last word podcast, last last word, mm -hmm. we weren't there yet. We were like counting down, and then it happened over the weekend and all this stuff. So by the time we got here, it's been interesting. So I wanted to ask Cognito mm -hmm. first, and then you as well. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. As all of the like events of the Felwinter's Lie quest transpired. Just kind of what was your journey through it, thoughts, and just kind of everything about it. So <laughs> Journey. Oh, man, yeah. Um, it's not a fun story because, um, like I said, I was very, very, been very upset with Destiny. Let's just say that. I've been 
They're not happy. Um, like uh, Teddy said, you know, heir apparent was literally the only reason why I pushed through Guardian Games, right? We all knew the uh, Felwinter quest was coming. So I'm like, all right. Not everybody. You know, <laughs> Most Some of people us. didn't know. That that is true. That is true. But those in the know, you know, so we like, all right, cool. And like I said, you know, last word, the last last word. Um, I started out and you know, I saw the public event requirement. I mean, I, I went to Anna Bray, then you go to see the public event requirement. I'm like, okay, cool, let me do my first Sarah Tower. And then I saw no percent, I mean, I saw one percent, but I saw nothing really elevate on the bar. And I said, Oh no. I was like, so this is a, a community focused thing. And I'm just like, nah, Bungie, I can't, I can't, I, I, I'm not ready for this. So I, I promptly said, I'm jumping on, I'm being on strike <laughs> and I'm going to let the community do this because I didn't want my time wasted. So I'm sitting there watching from the outside. Shout out to Sinister, shout out to you. You guys are always keeping me abreast of what was going on. Then we had the first snafu, obviously, you know, with the bunker and stuff like that. And I'm like, no, the quest is not, but you know, so. As that went on, I'm like, okay, cool. Then I think it was, I'm going to say a Sunday that it, uh, so late Sunday that it happened. And it, it, it Sunday about 11 o'clock my time. So it was right. pretty close to the end of the evening. Right. So then once I heard it was advanced, I was happy that they were able to get in front of that. And obviously we heard about the fix and all that other stuff. And then at that point, I'm like, okay, I'll get back in. So I'm about to embark on it. Obviously you have stories because you, I'm assuming, have the gun already, right? You went through. I do, yeah. Yeah, all you guys went through it. I mean, I will say this, you know, as far as the... The gun itself and and the quest as a whole, from a lore perspective, I'm hearing good things. But again, my concern is when a lot of this content is publicly event community based, what it is showing is if there is any problem, right, you have now halted the storyline. You have halted the advancement of the game until you can get this resolved. That's why these quests, in my opinion, are poor. And a lot of the Destiny community is very upset, you know, and not happy with it. But I want to bring it back to you guys. You guys have it. You guys have the gun. Overall, you know, I'm bringing it back to you, Ted. Like, what's your experience of the whole thing? Do you feel it was worth it now that you have it? Like, give me the, your whole breakdown on the whole felt, the lie, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. I think the quest in itself was was good. Um mm -hmm. Minus the two issues, so right. I'll, I'll break. I'll break it. I'll break it down. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I was really busy the week that it started, um, mm -hmm. and so I was not planning on participating in the Seraph Towers. Even if I did enjoy the Seraph Towers, I would still not have done it. <laughs> I really don't like the Seraph Towers. If Same. I haven't made that clear, um, <laughs> I I think they're some of the most poorly designed. Uh, like uh, thing. I mean. I, everyone about you is super talented and I respect all of them but like yeah, Seraph Towers suck and then when they added <laughs> when they added the Say update with Say with Jess Say with Jess Sugar right there man tell us and how then, you and then when they when, when they added when they changed the way they worked um, for the almighty title basically where you have two at the same time I think Ugh. that was like that was like the, uh, the uh, nail in the coffin for them yeah shout out to um, Iowa yeah basically and so so the quest came out and i, I had already known the quest steps because uh, it was data mined pretty early on in the season and i yes. i i tend to be very selective on what spoilers i look up um yes. because i want i want to plan around like if a quest later in the season is going to take a lot of time i want to be able to plan my work schedule around that and be able to like you know do that so i looked it up um mm -hmm. to an extent to understand what's going on and i saw yeah. that the first step was going to be a community event and my first reaction was this is just like another form of time gating <laughs> Like, there's nothing. There's no difference between time getting the quest and making the community do something, other than like there's an active level of participation. But the thing you're making them participate in is not liked by many people. So <laughs> uh, it was this kind of weird thing, and then obviously it was bugged, or I guess they assumed this number would be like I, that math number is nuts. Still, uh, I I think they intended. My theory. I have nothing to back this up. My theory is that they intended for that to last the whole season and then at some mm -hmm. point like during the season we were supposed to finish it but for whatever reason that didn't happen yeah um so anyway the community got it and um i had happened to have like a small break that night when it uh when it got completed so i was like all right i'll jump on i'll, I'll start going through the quest you know i got my mm -hmm. shirochi checkpoints started going to do my shotgun yep, kills and blah, blah blah um and mm -hmm. i did it and then my friends were a little bit ahead of me and so i was i was definitely in the discord and uh i came back and they're, they're all kind of like memeing and making fun of stuff and I was like what's going on and they're like <laughs> they're like well the quest is bugged and they just tweeted it out and I'm like well 
I'm turning this game off but when yep. they fix it. Uh, Save I'll, come ba- I'll come back to I'll... it. And uh, mm-hmm. so uh, yesterday when I got fixed, I, I jumped on quickly before my my work stuff, and uh, mm-hmm. I grabbed it. And I do really like the story aspect of it. I've always liked Spell Winter. Again, yeah. a warlock figure in the, in the war. So that's what, what, what uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I want a Forsaken shirt. So. Oh, I'm in. Yeah. Let's go. Let's um, go. Warlock stand up. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I like the story, and I. I um, I had watched videos of the area that you go to, people glitching into it, but yeah, it, was, it was cool to kind of see it with like the narrative beat and like yes. um, and what was going on. So mm-hmm. uh, I I understand what they were going for, and I mm-hmm. I appreciate that they they fixed it quickly and they were they were pretty um, humble about it. Yes, but yes. it kind of it really like sucked that it happened at the very end of the season, oh. and it happened after Guardian Games, and it happened Ooh. during this season particularly that just, like, wasn't that good. Um, mm-hmm. And it, I don't know, it just. It, it just seems in a weird place right now, and we'll we'll, we'll get to that in a bit, oh, yeah. I assume. But like, it's mm-hmm. it, it's just like this like tiny drop that that just made it so much worse than it actually was. But yeah. what do you what do you yeah. think? Uh, I, mean, I'm, I'm, I need your opinion, man. I'm dying. No, you're I the mean, one that, for that me, kept me abreast. I've been you know I jump in occasionally do a few public events. I, there was one point I was like, hey, I'll go to the moon, and I saw people like kind of standing around, and people are like doing general chat and stuff, trying to invite. I was like, hey. Actually trying to get a group together and be like, hey, we got like two people here that need the Almighty. I'm like, all right, I tripped into a group who's actually trying. We stayed there like two runs, had it done for whatever random people were there. So I was like, I've done these off and on throughout the season. But as you said, you're like, you get done with Guardian Games, the ultimate bounty of specific crazy bounty grinds of all time. And you're like, hey, you need to do this with one hand tied behind your back, throwing your shield at least 20 yards across the field off one bank (laughs) shot. And I mean, you got to go crazy specific specific on it. And you're like, hold Mm -hmm. on. Okay, so that, and you're like, all right, we made it through all the Guardian games. Titans are over there with their little statue that's, like, just as tall as a Guardian, no bigger. Yeah, why is the statue so small? But anyway, Okay, in relativity, (laughs) it is actually, like, the size of a Guardian. I walked my guy up to it. But, yeah, you would... I don't know if you would just picture it, like... You know, picture, like, Justice League. How tall is the Superman Mm -hmm. statue? I'm like, dude, that's, like, 15 feet tall. That's pretty damn big. Like, how long is this one? That's what I expected. Yeah, I was like, and this thing's, like, just the size of a Guardian walking around the tower. I'm like, just... What, were they planning for future years to stack them next to each other? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, we make through all that, and then like it kicks off. And we're like, all right, nine million. And I was just like, holy crap. And then what I, what I was doing at first is I was tracking to see, like, okay, so we've done this many to this many. And I started tracking by, like, hours. So I started tracking at, like, 4.21 p.m. And I was like, okay. So about 5.21 after an update, I was like, okay, we did this many. I was like, if we stay at this pace big giant if if people don't get tired of this thing it's gonna take this long to do edz and that was like seven days and i'm like we have four weeks left in the season technically it could be done if they start falling off next day it got a little bit slower like by the time i got to about the third day of tracking just the time of this thing which is probably when the patch came that it was going to be changed i was like European Dead Zone is going to take like two weeks and we don't have that much time i was like it ain't gonna happen it was gonna be like Mm -hmm. 14 days or 250 i was like that's not right it's not gonna happen Mm -hmm. so and then magically and then, yeah, I was like, all of a sudden, they're like, hey, the, during the week, it's 5X, and the weekend, is 10X. I was like, how do you win? I, mm, I, it's like, again, as, as Teddy said, it's like, either it was meant to be like, hey, we start this at the beginning of the season, it tracks all season long, which if they mm-hmm. did that and that set that expectation, that would probably be fair. And be like, hey, every so often, you'd be like, hey, I'm on, let me go throw another, you know, public event in the pile, because there's 9 million of them, and you have 12 weeks to do it. We've been doing these, we we worked for our bits, which apparently have no other use, which seems to be really sad because they're going away at the end of the oh, season. Yeah. And we've got like, I've got 7,000 bits. I'm like, I have really <laughs> nothing to spend them on. So uh-huh. we we already grinded enough for all three. And we've been doing these things, the weekly bounties. And then we're like 9 million. And then when you do that math, you're something, the, the math in this season, as well as many other things, has been a little skewed. Either the Titan, mm-hmm. the Hunter waiting math in Guardian Games, and the 9 million public events, the waiting has been off. But I was like, it got to that point. I'm like, okay. So even I was just like, all right. So they bumped it up to 5X. And I was like, all right, EDZ is actually tracking. I could see. And then you see Raid Secrets put together the spreadsheet that's tracking like the estimated finish time. Did you tag me in that one, actually? I did. Yeah, yeah you I did. I that. remember that was you. Yeah, it was like, so I started watching that one. And then they started working on the moon. And it was starting to climb a little faster over the weekend because 10X got going. Mm. I was like, okay, this thing's moving. I was like, and then uh, when they were re- getting ready to finish the moon, I was like, okay, it's like, 24 hours later, they're probably going to finish IO. And then I kept mm-hmm. checking it, and the estimated time just started walking back. And I'm like, at some point, I figured that would slow down. Nuh-uh, it mm-hmm. just sped up, because it was like noon, and this was like Pacific mm-hmm. time. 10, 8, 4 in the morning, like back to like midnight. I'm like, 
Jesus, mm-hmm. is going to be done in like 90 minutes. <laughs> so finally when it gets done, you're like, oh, okay, so the community is coming together behind this thing. Final push. Mm-hmm. Everybody's on streaming now. Mm-hmm. And you just watch Twitter be like, hey, we're on. We're going to go for this final push. Be it Glad, Dado, Kakis, all these people. About 30 minutes later, Glad, Dado, Kako, going to bed. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Cognito should not have had anything in his mouth at that point. So he didn't spit it all over his camera. <laughs> Uh, that was good timing. But that was how that that was how that went. You're like, yes, I got my shotgun kills. You did Sorochi. My brother actually got on, which was like, hey, we're sitting there in the Leviathan, just trading kills, chatting for a little bit because his birthday was in like 30 minutes from that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to my bro, Salute. happy belated Salute. again. Happy, 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 happy yeah. uh, mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden we're going through, and like you go down in the bunker, you're like cool. The next step after the kills, you get back out, and I'm like sitting there. And at first, I'm kind of with you because I was a little behind, and I was like. Yeah. Is there a puzzle? Is there something about Phil Winter? I don't yeah. remember. I need to go look somewhere on the moon, but there's no mm-hmm. marker. And then I'm Nothing. like, is it a puzzle? And then finally, like, everybody's starting to say it's bugged. And then finally, the official mm-hmm. tweet came out from DG, and everybody's just like shutting it down. I was just like, oh. yeah. And it, as you said, it just took the giant wind at like the whole community coming together. It's like the it's like the quarters of time puzzle being there. Mm-hmm. And then you going through 29 of the 30 rooms, and the 29th mm-hmm. one is like, like, you you keep getting an error code or something. It it gets oh. to that point or something like that would be the only way I can kind of relate it to anything to get that close and then it just be like, nope. Mm-hmm. And especially when um, they said, hey, they're looking into it. We've got an idea. And they said, hey, they've got to go through testing and certification. I thought it was mm-hmm. going to be like another week. So they got to it faster than I thought they would. Yeah, they did. I mean, right. they pushed it a yeah, couple days, time. honestly, like, when mm-hmm. I expected like an easy week. Because, I mean, yeah. console certifications can take a little while. They're not going to be an easy fix. Yeah. So... They Mm -hmm. pushed patches out, and it was when I finally got to finish it on, Mm -hmm. what was it, Thursday? Yesterday? Yeah, it's just been a weird week. Days Mm -hmm. are still weird. Mm -hmm. Um, When I finally got to finish it, like going through the little bit of lore that we got, and then I went to go get 200 kills, and you've got the whole lore book, which I do like that. So, Question, is the the lore worthy? Because I need need to know. I need the E... You know, I, I need your approval. I Would you feel it. it was worthy? I thought. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. I thought the story uh, behind. Go ahead, Teddy. Mm-hmm. I, I just watched the Bife video actually before we started recording, and he did. Nice. He did a whole, the point. He, yeah, uh, shout out to Bife. He did. Yeah. A, he did a whole like forty minute video on yep. the entire lore book, and um, yeah. it was pretty good actually. I I, good. I enjoyed it. I I went and got the kills for the shotgun or for the shotgun lore as well, because okay. uh, unfortunately there's triumph score tied to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but it, I liked it. It was mm-hmm. and it filled okay. in some gaps um, from what we had previously known about mm-hmm. the iron lords and stuff. So it, it, uh, I need this iron lord lore. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it okay. was it was good. Okay, good, good, good. That's why I wanted to make sure. I just I mean we understand the issue, but I had to ask that specific part. If the lore was definitely if they if they if they nailed it, I was yeah. very curious. You know, yeah, so, so okay, like, r- like, just pay attention to the story. Like, when you mm-hmm. go to play that quest, turn off all distractions. Like, pay attention mm-hmm. to the story, the little voiceovers and everything. Turn that up mm-hmm. and just enjoy it. Because honestly, like, it was it was interesting because I went through that. And then people in my chat were literally discussing, like, well, hey, this side of the opinion of what, you know, said person did. I'm trying to be very vague since you haven't actually yeah, seen it please, yet. Please, please. Uh, but do it Teddy's tonight. like, do it hey, there's like, hey, this person did these things. We can't, you know. Not, Mm -hmm. you know, we can't forget about those. And this person's like, well, it has been this long since all this has happened. You know, Mm -hmm. mulling it all over for so long, maybe there's change in there. And that was Mm -hmm. what was going back and forth in my chat. And I was just like, hmm. So it's like just the fact that chat was actually talking about it. I was kind of going, okay, all right. Um, All right, all right. But yeah, it's like Mm -hmm. it has, I like the idea behind that. But again, Mm -hmm. this is one of those weird things to where in theory, this is cool. I like the, I like also the way it was delivered. Um, mm-hmm. For the non-spoilery, you you'll know exactly what game I'm picturing. They did story delivery like this when you see it. Gotcha. Okay. And Teddy, I Fair don't know enough. if you played it. it. Is a uh, it's another type of game like this. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm trying not to spoil it. <laughs> I know. I know. You, you be like you're dancing. I like it. I like you dancing. Me, do you right want right me to there. just tell them how it's delivered? Like, yeah, you can tell them how it's delivered. Okay, picture division story I mean, I, delivery. I've, I've done the mission. I just mm-hmm. I don't know what you're referencing exactly. Uh oh, he's stuck in the uh in in, in, in the deceiver chamber. Oh, nice move. Uh-oh. Okay, can't okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, of course. Just every so often, one little blip. Um, I was so gonna good. say picture division story delivery. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, something kind of like that. Um, okay. And that's what I've either I've been playing through Neo Two, which I'm mm-hmm. like two chapters away from finishing crazy good game so mm-hmm. far um kicking my butt by the way mm-hmm. 
but they do like animated kind of storyboards, like not crazy high fidelity, but picture just like right. kind of an artist, a brief drawing, and like there's art in there, but it's like it's not yeah. fully rendered cutscenes. And it's like yeah, okay, it's fine. like fine. I want to like if they do something like that or more stuff mm. like this. Either way, mm. and again, this mm. fits because of who's telling the story of why it's presented this way. Mm. But story like. Engaging in story in game, like going to read the lore book in the game. I'm just gonna sit there. Hey, let me pull up my lore tab and sit in the tower and be like, book one, scroll. Yeah, no. Book two, <laughs> scroll. No. Versus the way it's delivered in this one, I like that a lot no. more. So more of no. this, I would love to see, and especially no. as it's being tied to like, hey, this is why you get this gun, and then there's the lore book afterwards. All that stuff's very cool. Mm -hmm. But again, how in the hell does that tie into the Almighty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's, that's valid. Continue. Take. It's it's more of um, I think it was more about the Rasputin story more than just the his, Almighty just stuff. Just him himself. Yeah, yeah, him and him and uh, the other character. Uh, <laughs> the other character. No, no, no. no. y'all did. Yeah. So this is great. Y'all being why, so respectful. Come on, y'all being no, so respectful. I love y'all. Well, you're the one who has a podcast on Friday. And you didn't take this time to get the gun. What you mean? I didn't take this time to get the gun. <laughs> Did you have the shotgun kills done? Or it takes like five minutes if no, you had the kills done I told before. You, they were on strike since uh, public event foolishness. I'm not doing that until they resolve that, and then I get back. Listen, you got to stand up for something sometimes. That was not acceptable content. Don't get mad at me because done. I chose to say that this. I am done. not doing it. I'm just saying that I part is it. done. So. Here's anyway. the problem. I, during that part, I said, you know what? I'm going to take some time to take knock out some backlog. And I got like three games finished. I got like Final yeah. Fantasy VII finished. I'm all the way through God Gears Tactics. I got Mortal Kombat 11. I got very productive. So now nice. I'm back. I'll, I'll be in there yeah. this week. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's like it is cool to give backstory. I'm just curious how this ties mm -hmm. into the rest right. of the season. We have the Almighty Fair coming. Enough. We had the moment when, you know, Zaval is talking to Rasputin, kind of comes to like, a peace accord basically between those two. It's like, okay, we're actually going to work together. Mm -hmm. That was how many weeks ago? Six weeks ago that that, yeah, no, that was maybe not that right far. Here. It's been a long mm -hmm. time that that's happened. And there's mm -hmm. still this giant ship hurtling towards earth, which mm -hmm. granted the way it travels through space, it could appear technically in the horizon on the last day before it actually gets to be visible. Not going to happen right. that way. I'm still just like, I want the season to kind of finish. I'm at that yes, point. Yes. Now. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. It's like, I just like, Hey, <laughs> almighty's coming. Pyramid ships are mm. going to do something, which that math mm. is either... I wanted to ask you guys, put a pin in the pyramid ships. I want to come back to that in a minute. Um, mm -hmm. But all this stuff's like culminating, and I'm just like I'm just like dying to grab the next page of the book and pull it yes. over just to yes. see what the hell happens. Because right now, I'm just like, as soon as I got the shotgun on Tuesday, or Thursday, I was just like, mm -hmm. back now to... Now what? Literally, my chat exactly. was either like, <laughs> back to Neo, I guess. Like, it was... It's yeah. kind of those points. And I was... Yeah. So that's been... It's been a very weird journey all season long. And then to culminate mm -hmm. in a huh, and then like emotional high to like a cliff falling off into mm -hmm. an oblivion hole is like it's been quite a roller coaster. So and it's a game; it's not that big of a deal. But in, within the game, mm -hmm. yeah, it's been a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that was yeah, a lot man. of talking. <laughs> no, no, you, you you're good, man. You're good. I, I'm. I listen. It, it's just. It's just. We gotta call it what it is. The season of the worthy is just unworthy. You know what I'm saying? It, it just as a whole, as a content. You know what I'm saying? In, in comparison to other content, this is probably been the lowest i've seen you know what i'm saying in a lot this is below curse of osiris level and look we love them we love them to guess it's just one of those times you know what i'm saying that the content didn't hit and a lot of the ideas didn't hit and um like i'm i'm with you e I, i'm so ready to see what's the next connective tissue from this almighty thing to what are we going to do next and we know uh, like you said the pins on the wall doritos are inbound we got it we know about that but it's just like how quickly do we do Doritos? You know, do we do they do they send an emissary? Is it you know because we we know September is going to be crazy. Luke told us that, right? Luke said you are not ready for what's about to happen in September. But it's just the cure my curiosity from a narrative beat. Man, what is going to happen? So that's why I need this thing to be over. <laughs> so I'm going to okay. log in. I'll and get for those shotty. of us that have completed mm -hmm. the quest, when mm -hmm. it comes to <laughs> next. <laughs> When it comes to next for those season, that have, for those who've been dedicated, <laughs> don't you shame me, damn it! <laughs> You've had time, is all I'm oh saying. Oh my god! Like, continue. I'm gonna anyway, let that one slide. Uh, <laughs> no, but for Teddy, when it comes to next season, do you think it's related to basically the bait in this quest? Uh, what do you? Well, I can't really ask that because I would uh, elaborate. I'm not exactly sure what the question is. <laughs> um. 
Uh, for you what mean, mean, for what said character? What caused said character's demise? The unnamed character. <laughs> Do you think that I, is going to have any relation to? Okay, no. You don't think that's no. going to be next season? I, I I think this story is wholly what? self-contained, oh. and they they the Rasputin part of it maybe because it's meant to show us without spoiling it. I'm, I'm like trying really hard not to. I know y'all, seriously y'all what it is. Y'all doing uh, a masterful job. Uh, <laughs> the Rasputin hard. part of it is meant to show us a a different side of Rasputin right. yeah. and understand Rasputin's history, and I think mm. that will be relevant. Okay. But Ooh. the actual other characters aspect of it is just there to satisfy. Just explaining uh, the that character's but, journey. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, basically, and explain some some previous mishaps okay. in the lore, mm-hmm. or not mishaps, but yeah. I guess missed aspects. So of yeah, it. when it comes to season eleven, season of the Redacted, I want to know what the hell is going to happen. Like we are two yeah. weeks away. I know the trailer's probably going to drop on June third, like the Wednesday before mm-hmm. it drops and stuff. Same the way that they did last time, but I'm just over here dying because again, it's like I'll log on for a Tuesday and be like, this Tuesday yeah. was literally like. Well, we know the quest is bugged. There is no Iron Banner. Back to... Ne- mm. Like, it's been... That's these last three weeks. It says, like, and more. And I'm like, okay, we got the quest. We did that. But again, I just want to know how this stuff wraps up. Because at some point, they can't tell us about the next season until we finish up the Almighty. This Almighty might mm. lead into something else. So I'm just, like, on the edge of my seat to know what's next. Yeah. But that's all. There's mm. nothing in-game for me to do. I'm literally just waiting to see how the story ends. So here's a here's a question. <clears throat> Around this time last year, we got the Outbreak Prime quest in the tower, oh, yeah. oh, um, right. and then in August of 2018, we got uh, Whispers a little bit later, but um, yep. still on the same time. And do you think we have that at the end of the season, or are they just not gonna? gonna I think do, this. Like, was, is, I think this mission? was that. You think so? Yeah, I don't think it's, there's. Again, it's pretty lackluster. It for, is in comparison. It is to lackluster those. for sure. Uh, no argument that this is lackluster. They had more backing during both of those two times to be able to have teams divided off into making True. other quests. And True. this one, with the way it was delivered between public events and then this, and then just the the general way the lore is explained and stuff like that. I think that's that's what they have time for right now. I mean, you have you know senior artists like you know Nine Hydras. Ooh talking out there about, like, the the room that they built in the end, just kind of look of it in the cool. And it's like, it's sick, but it's like, mm. they, they built... I don't know if there's another one of those out there. I don't how many, see how many that. weeks? How many weeks we have left? What two, What is our time frame? Two and a half. Two, uh, two. two and a half. And as of right now, there's no specific uh, roadmap calendar item? It, nope. There hasn't the, been one since Guardian. Guardian Games was it. Guardian Games yeah. said, and more. That was all. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't, I don't think there's enough time for anything of that magnitude like what you're saying with Ted, as far as like an, uh, an outbreak or a, you know a whisper kind of thing it would be a little too close to the end but i i will say shout out to um was it crystal in in a chat there's a possibility of some minor maybe lore beat or then you know like a, a, a again another connective tissue beat which is like um for example that when we finished um what you call it and Osiris goes up to Rasputin, and we had that cutscene when you log. I think we may get like something similar to that mm-hmm. on a reset, but you know, coming in because they got they have to connect this thing. I mean, we do know obviously Almighty, Almighty's coming. That probably might be it, right? The Almighty comes, you know, whatever it is. it's looming, you know, you know, da, 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 you know, kind of thing. Nine and then, million you know, satellites shot. later, or strange yeah. math, not that many, but still. Yeah, there like is a the scene. CB. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, there's a scene in the in the trailer for this season at the very beginning when we got when we got yes. the season where uh, uh, a warlock wearing Felder's mm-hmm. helm and World then a, a, a bunch of NPCs are standing by a core and looking up, looking up, kind of like covering their hands or yes. their faces. I mean, with their hands. Yes. Um, and that hasn't happened. I mean, yes. that could that could have just been them just recording like a thing in game because it looked like it was an engine. It wasn't a cutscene. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm kind of with you. I hope there is some kind of like cutscene yeah. or connective thing because. Yeah. It was a little lackluster to see Osiris go talk to Rasputin, and then Osiris has not been part of this season. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he just kind of vanished. He's like, ooh. ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Teddy, like some people in chat were saying, do you think Rasputin and Osiris' was discussion was about what we just learned? Do you think that's what he said he is like? Do you think that's linked? Uh, ooh. I th- Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Okay. I was, um, I was, somebody said that and it, I don't know, but at least in my head, I was like, I could see that as to why he was the way he was. Right. Cause again, yeah. it depends on the debate of where you stand after you get done seeing this lore. So, right. 
Yeah, I think that would make sense. Again, I'm trying really hard not to spoil this. No, no, like, I'm you can't the, the, yeah. oh my so God. vague. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, <laughs> Sorry the, for everybody story, watching this later on. You guys can give Cognito hell next week <laughs> when we get to talk the, about it. The story implication mm. is meant to show us a side of Rasputin. Yes. And I think Osiris has found out the ugly part of that story, mm. and that's why he says that. Gotcha. Uh, but from us as the outside perspective viewing it, it's meant to show us a, a deeper side and a, like a better side. Mm. Uh, that's like probably as vague as I can make it without yeah, that's, just saying that's, what's going on. Actually, you guys give me so much content. Uh, I'm so hyped to get back on so, it. <laughs> um, just to like set the expectation, the mission is not very long. Yeah, it's, it's like five-ish five, yeah, no, no, like five it. minutes. <laughs> um, but it's got it, some good dialogue. So it yep. kind of rem- Basically, what you guys are describing kind of reminds me and correct me if I'm wrong, of uh, Zavala's conversation with Rasputin and as to motivations and stuff. Obviously, it's more than that, but I'm just saying, like, context on why maybe he does the things he does. Obviously, we know about Ted character that most people know already, but, you know what I'm saying? I wanna, I'm want i very curious about that. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, we, we'll see. I mean, yeah, you, I think you, they, you now have to text me when you get this gun. <laughs> oh, and granted, nah, definitely it could be that. 30 minutes after the podcast ends. Either way, you have to text me when you're done. <laughs> Definitely get done. And la- last point, because we didn't talk about this, I gotta ask both of you. Um, the gun, fell with his life. How are you guys feeling about it? You guys it put will, it in the it wild. It will be popular. That's all I'm probably gonna say. Mm, okay, uh, okay. I, How are you feeling, Teddy? So I have a god roll of mind menders that I'm very attached to that I grinded a lot for. Yes. Um, and I've been using that a lot. And mm. they're not the same roll, but they're similar. Okay. Because uh, mind menders can't get opening shot unless it's the curated roll. Yes. Um. So I, I kind of messed with both of them a little bit. I didn't. Mm-hmm. I, I I don't play a lot of PvP, so mm-hmm. I'm not. I don't think I'm the right person to ask for this. But mm-hmm. I think Fel Winter is, is slightly more consistent, mm-hmm. and it, it can have the potential for like very deep uh, one hit kills. But mm-hmm. it still suffers from the shotgun RNG. Mm-hmm. However, the one advantage that it does have is that it's a later seasoned gun, which means when Mindbenders gets retired. Mm-hmm. This gun will ultimately this replace it. This will be the new, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, how and, I'm looking and, at it. And this is a quest item, though they did say that this quest does go away at the end yeah. of the season. So, so if yeah. you don't get it in the next I'm two weeks, it. I read it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're not be able to get it. Uh, that being said, from mm-hmm. preliminary um, videos that I've watched and read a post, it seems like yeah. a God World Astral Horizon is actually still, better. Okay. Um, I don't have one of those, unfortunately, so mm-hmm. I can't test it myself, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also kind of don't care if I'm going to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I, 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 just don't play, I just don't play enough PvP. Don't play but, PvP. Uh, yeah, what do, you, what do you think, you Bontis? Uh, did you, have you used it? Have you liked it? Uh, and PvP is it's just it's again, horrible. it's like I'm always like, I'm okay at PvP, and I even tried it out mm-hmm. on a stream just to joke. Is I was like, I got it. All right, let's go play PvP. I was like, I am so out of practice with shotguns. It's not funny. Uh, mm-hmm. But just listening to different people talk about it by the time it came out, um, I think, especially Fallout's video, he did some really deep testing on it and yeah. stuff like that. What's, what's the there consensus? There is some oh, the scientists on it. What do you say? Uh, I mean, the range for him on his fe- on his uh, mind benders consistency mm-hmm. for him is like seven and a half meters, not mm-hmm. quite. And this one can mm-hmm. consistently kill at eight, so it can Ooh. outrange it. And you can just pick opening shot. And I think the difference is, as you said, this is season of the worthy. It's going to be available for another year, so nine more months. Mm everybody who's playing right now can get this thing at this point. Mm-hmm. So those mm-hmm. who are currently playing right now are going to potentially basically be guaranteed to have a very, very good shotgun and be yeah. able to avoid said grind, which we'll right. get into more of a discussion later. They don't mm-hmm. have to go spend three, you know, three yeah, weeks, three months benders. in, you know, the mind benders grind and just be like, Hey, I've gone through this strike 10 times a day. I haven't even got one to drop yet yeah. versus, Go through the quest. Everybody does it. I, I have a direct path. I get my thousand kills and I get mm-hmm. a gun that is very, very, very viable and next to comparable, mm-hmm. if not equal to some of the mm-hmm. top guns that you can get. There may be smidge in like, and if the trials can outmatch it barely, that actually probably right. is where it should be if you can get the right roll. But the like time to get one versus the other. No, like mm-hmm. this is going to be just popular as can be. Just popular. Okay. Well, no, this is, I'm glad you guys broke it down that way. I'm very curious. I was one of the very unlucky ones. I tried to grind. I never got a mind benders to drop. You know, also me being a PvP guy, I'm very excited because, you know, I want to use, you know, obviously 600 is good right now. So I want to use Cyril's regime and something in the energy what I, so I can give up my Lord of Wolves. I hate having to use that all the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. And then the, the, the Vorpal aspect has me intrigued because as a Trials player, I'm thinking, you know, maybe during, being that you have the selectable perks, during like later rounds when everyone's got their super switching to Vorpal 
in you know it, it's kind of easy you know what I'm saying, at that point during the later round so i'm curious man i'm excited for it it's solar and i like the aesthetic of it so um i will be getting that done so he can get off my back on the podcast <laughs> uh, so quick follow-up question to that so bungie has this track record of when they give us a very powerful gun yeah uh, that they've curated that they end up nerfing that archetype yes la- like very closely oh, after the fact we gonna speak about that because it was alluded to in the twab yeah and so mm-hmm. giving everyone a god rolled shotgun uh to me is like we're gonna nerf shotguns pretty soon enjoy yep. while we have it yep you, you, you're so it's literally bungie's way i've always said it like okay we recognize an issue. Have your fun. Yeah. Everybody, the have, everybody got hard light from Zer before. Hey, from, yeah. You know the vibes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, are so <laughs> on to something. Like I, I completely agree. Yeah, for them to give you that, it, it's something's coming. So we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. get, we'll get yeah, the, ready. Chat's even it. saying this. Like when I played the couple, I played two matches, and they said, and granted, it was right when the gun came out, so I'm sure it's skewed. Mm-hmm. But they said like nine out of twelve people are using this thing. Oh my lord! Yeah, trials so be it's, yeah. Tri- I, actually, while we're doing this, I can go look up trials report because it is yeah. Let me give you the report. Uh, Shout out to Saturday. He says Soros and Felwood is going to be the new meta. He bets. Oh man, yeah. Because if I'm thinking it, you know the world's Fel- thinking. Felwinters is, like, is 275,000 kills. Revoker is number geez. two at 182,000 kills. It's like top Are of all. You, oh my god! <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's what, crazy. It's what dead, map is dead it cliffs. Um. I don't oh, even know okay. how to describe that one. It's like the... It's one that has really bad spawns. Yeah, I can believe at, that. At, at, at A. Dead cliff is. It's the one that A is inside like in the, the, like the, the back corner. The heavy is on that like weird little middle like two hallway area. Uh, and the mm-hmm. heavy is like kind of on this side. You've got... What, just give me the aesthetic. That it'll help you remember. It's on Earth in the EDZ. And yeah, it's EDZ, got like Greystone a, a building. warehouse. Yep, and then like the, oh, like yeah, the yellowish yeah, yeah. warehouse. And C's in the yellowish warehouse. Yes. You've got the under. And you can split <laughs> both ways, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you'll have some close wow. range, definitely, people. Oh, that's will... close range business right there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's going to be spooky. Mm-hmm. Mindbenders is at 51K. Fellwinters is at 275. It's only been out for how long, though? I mean, it came crazy. out Thursday, but yeah, I mean, Trials is today, so yeah. Jesus. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. So, ah, it's going to be fun. Yeah. What else we got? So, um, besides the fact that we got the quest, we also got a TWAB. Uh, got a couple different things of discussion, and I will honestly say, and I've actually be curious on chat, when you guys read this just first time through, now I was like kind yeah. of watching a TV show in the background came up, I was like, oh, mm-hmm. this actually came out a little earlier than usually like 45 minutes earlier, usually it's later, mm-hmm. but, and I was reading through it, and the first time I read through it, I'm like, what did I just read? <laughs> It wasn't the mm. clearest thing in the world when it comes to the decryption, mm. the engrams, and like mm-hmm. that whole world loop pool thing. When they're like, "Hey, you can't mm-hmm. wait to talk about the world loop pool," and I'm like, "Wait, which things come where?" Mm-hmm. And if I had a mm-hmm. Reddit post which clarified one of my questions, which helped, right? Um, right. But yeah, so obviously the lie was the big issue this week. But then they were going to talk yes. about the future. They're going to talk about more rewards going into next season and decrypting the future is. And this is going to tie into sunsetting, so this is just going to be one big-ass discussion. Yeah. Sorry in advance. No, no, go for it, bro. Um, so today they said we're going to talk about some changes that are coming to Season 11 to the way the World Loot Pool works. Uh, because the World Loot Pool serves as a baseline of legendary gear that can be earned across different activities, we want to update and refresh it seasonally with meta-relevant weapons, some of which were previously exclusive to uh, specific activities like Gambit or Crucible. This shared loot pool can be unwieldy, If you're looking for a specific role of a specific weapon, a pool too large can make it statistically challenging to find, much less with the role you want. I think we can all agree that's 100% true, because people are like, hey, I want to go for, what is that little sidearm? Uh, Last uh, Hope. Last Last Hope. Hope, Feeding Frenzy. Frenzy. Uh, Multi-kill clip. I still don't have that role. Yeah, I got Feeding Frenzy, but not that role. I watched Scarrow go through, what was the, like half a million fractaline trying to get one of those and he ended up getting one there wow yep because he got it from the uh obelisk turn in because those were world yeah. pools he got it mm-hmm. through that Absolutely. i did close to five hundred thousand fractaline and never got the god roll yeah. i i only got close once yeah uh i don't so think i'm even I'm, remotely near it so i was very mm-hmm. disappointed yeah. so <laughs> yeah, obviously like and that's kind of the thing about like the god roll stats some of in this game hey i want a good roll piece of armor I want a good mm-hmm. roll stat piece of armor with the right affinity, which at least we can switch now, and then a proper stat distribution. So if you're trying to go for exotic, I need the exotic. I need a high stat roll, and then distribute it away that's not complete trash, and recovery is two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've had those. <laughs> Can't stand them. 
Um, so, starting in Season 11, it will be curated both for relevance and overall size. Mm -hmm. Now, the size I still have to question because there's literally 30 on this list, so... Hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. To strike a balance between number of rewards and the chance to get a sought after drop. Every mm -hmm. season gear from previous seasons will be added, and any gear that would no longer ha have a max power level greater than or equal to... should just say greater than because it's not going to be the same. Mm -hmm. uh, the current season cap will be cycled out to ensure drops are power, power relevant in Season 11. So in theory, right. the only... Just for an example, Season 12, Year 4, the only things that are going to be in that world loot pool when we get to year four are going to be mm -hmm. season of dawn and onward so nothing from shadow right. keep nothing in older will be in there that's kind of their way to curate that and make sure if it does drop in there you at least can use it at that time maybe not right. in two months or whenever you get done with that season but at least in that season it will be power valid per se mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now i made a list joys of <laughs> being bored not really just prepping <laughs> for this and mm -hmm. the list of things that we have going into next season mm -hmm. that are going to be in the world loot pool. I also put mm -hmm. the list in my discord and somebody is like, there's a whole bunch of weapons. I don't care about <laughs> 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 Teddy's over there. Like, hmm, interesting. Mm -hmm. interesting. All right. I so, mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the list and I'm going to go through and list you guys by number as well. Just so you guys get a point of reference. Yeah. The Prescott, that was you. Oh no, I got you. Mm -hmm. uh, so auto so rifles, impressive. we have two. Uriel's Gift and Gnawing Hunger. Fusion mm -hmm. Rifles, we have three. Main Ingredient, Elatha 4, FR4, and Timeless, Timelines Vertex. Hand Cannons, right. we never have enough hand cannons, and we've got four. Old mm -hmm. Fashioned, Dire Promise, True Prophecy, and Nature of the Beast, which is not the Raid Hand Cannon, because God knows mm. I've been confused over that multiple times. That's not oh, yeah, Nation yeah. I, of I the Beast. I always think Nation of the Beast. I always get that confused, too. It's yeah. funny you said so that. So this is like uh. the year one or very old school Nature of the Beast. So Ooh. four hand cannons there. Uh, mm -hmm. Rocket launchers, two, Mass Epoch mm -hmm. and Bad Omens. Shotguns, mm -hmm. Hawthorns, Toil and Trouble, and Wishbringer. Sidearms, Last mm -hmm. Hope, Enigma's Draw. Lonesome mm -hmm. from Gambit, by the way. That's where we'll get into some mm -hmm. of this. And Last Dance. Grenade launchers, we've got Outrage of Fortune and Interference. So Outrage of Fortune mm -hmm. is actually coming into next season as a current drop, it sounds like. Right, Pulse right. Rifle, GN7, Last Perdition. Sniper Rifle, mm -hmm. now, that one's weird. What's that? Last Perdition specifically is one we could have just got done grinding for with the mm -hmm. um, Fractal Line. Yes. So if I got a good one there, is this going to be a Season 11 drop versus a versus Season of a, a Drifter yeah. drop coming into yeah. some of the Sense setting stuff? We'll good, get to that. Good point. Good uh, point. Sniper Rifle, Distant Tumulus, Tumulus, and Long Shadow. Sword, mm -hmm. Honor's Edge, and Steel Sybil. Bow, Arsenic Bite, one. Breach Grenade Load Launcher, Truth Teller. That's an old year one Breach Load. Mm -hmm. Since, by the way, like none of those are coming forward. The scout yeah. rifles, night watch, just one, one scout rifle. Mm -hmm. to the also scouts. from Gambit yeah. Prime. Yes. So, if you still need a weapon or weapon roll from the current Vanguard, Crucible, or Gambit playlist that isn't on that list, go grab it now. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that. I was like, and this is the quote that mm. got linked to me in my Discord. So Cosmo replied because me and amongst everybody, I even tagged him in a question because I was like, I wanted to know what is going to happen with this world loot pool with regards to vendors. Armor, yes. armor will come from specific activities like Crucible and Gambit and turning mm. in tokens at the vendors. But you will get weapons from the world loot pool listed from in the TWAB from doing these activities or turning in the tokens and vendors. For example, mm -hmm. you might always get Crucible armor from turning in tokens to Shax, but you might right. get the Gambit sidearm from turning in Crucible tokens to Shax. So we the no weapon longer... Yeah. Right. So my question is, that being that we've now got this world loop pool with former items that were specific to specific pools, <laughs> activity pools. Yep. My question then, you know, so does Gambit and, you know, like, do they not have, will they not have a new updated specific pool to themselves? It doesn't That's sound like it. Which so seems like it's all grouped together. I don't know how I feel about that. Continue. So, yeah, yeah, no, like, that's, it, that's all of this bullet point. So this is discussion topic mm -hmm. one. Go. Yeah. So, yeah. The, way go, that, Teddy. the way that I understood it, and I guess it kind of helped that you just explained it again, was that going forward, mm -hmm. at least for next season, mm -hmm. or whatever season they listed this as, mm -hmm. this will be the legendary loot pool if I turn in tokens at the Gambit or when I level up Gambit, or if I right. turn him in at Shaxx, or if I turn him in at Vanguard, presumably. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then also any legendary drop, but then there's also this, like, uh, drop chance thing that they talked about in the previous TWAB. I forgot what they called it. Oh, uh, yeah, the, curate, the kind of curation of that, yeah. Yeah, that which might be basically the, it's the, like... That might be the... Ooh. Is that the seasonal one, though? Uh, it might be. I, I'm forgetting. I'm, I've been behind on a lot of no, news and That's, kind of yeah. catching up, but... Uh, uh, they talked to me, basically it's like how it worked in Destiny 1 except it's like a chance thing now rather than right. me just selecting armor or weapon um, right it sounded really good in theory but mm. to me what this sounds like is that just the uh, legendary loot pool in general will just contain these uh, these weapons going uh, forward for season 11 yes. uh, which is kind of a weird design choice to me but mm -hmm. I think it plays into their uh, their desire to really control the sandbox mm-hmm um because a lot of these weapons are not good yeah <laughs> no. do you have an opinion sir because i know uh, you do yeah uh, i'm trying to be open-minded here <laughs> um you know i don't like what i'm hearing right be, be, the, the, be, it, again it's I information don't like i feel what i'm hearing here. <laughs> <laughs> again let me let me throw a caveat there is still information that i feel next season still has to be presented that I might not be aware of. So I, I, I just want to be clear that ne what's the ne next season number? Season 10? What, what's 11. We uh, We're in 11. 10. All right. 11 We're in 10. Next. So 11 is next. So when season 11 starts, are, is Bungie telling me that when I play Gambit, right? Because all I see, let's just say Gambit, for example. All yeah. I see now is knowing hun hunger in there, right? So they say, grab, you know, whatever is in the blue pool now from these vendors, because, you know, this is your lag. Go grab it now if it's not on this list. So anything non-knowing hunger and whatever the other thing that's in this loot pool from Gambit. Nightwatch is the other one. Nightwatch, right? Is, is, is going away. So, like, let's use Trust, for example. Trust is on that part, right? So is Trust gone? That's what it sounds like. Trust. Yeah, spare, is, spare yeah. rations. Spare rations. Well, spare, you know, that's spare reckoning. can come from reckoning, technically. Come reckoning it it, now, it, it can well, yeah, it can drop from Gambit. Well, uh, that's the big, and that's like the does, big right. question. Does Reckoning go away in the fall? Like, does yeah, that disappear? That, like, that, is there going to be Gambit perfected? Because they said Gambit yeah. and Gambit Prime would last for one year. Right. Gambit's whole coming to Jesus meeting is supposed to happen in the fall. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> so to me, again, if you look at it face value, it seems weird as hell. I don't understand why this decision choice to, you know, consolidate the pools and then tell you anything that she didn't get from the pools that still currently exist that are going to go away, you better grab, right? So to me, it almost feels like maybe the modes, I'm guessing now, it almost feels like what we talked about, E, which is like maybe cataclysmic event of said activities. I don't know, man. This is very strange. This is very strange. No, I, it's, it, a, it's a no, weird it's... design choice. Yeah, it's been, I've mm -hmm. been kind of just browsing Reddit a little bit, and yeah. the balance changers are a whole different discussion. We'll get to those in a bit. Right. Mm -hmm. But just the idea that specifically it's like, it almost feels like they're trying to give you like freedom to grind where you want to, but by doing that, they almost make the numbers of the grind harder to get what you want. Mm hmm. And also, mm -hmm. as other people have said, you take away the identity of certain activities. If I'm playing yes. Crucible, and that's one of the that's, big ones, is like if I'm playing Crucible, I'm going for Crucible weapons. If I want right. Gambit, what what is anyone's incentive now incentive to go to play Gambit? It. Yeah, <laughs> Because not that yeah. many people like that activity, and now if I can go get the viable weapons from said activity, I can mm -hmm. go get my Gnawing Hunger, because auto rifles still apparently are decent. Maybe. Right. Still. We'll see. Yeah. Um, but if I can get that, I could get it in Gambit, but I could get it in Crucible. I could get it in Vanguard, mm -hmm. but I can also get it with all these other things. It's almost like if you're in Gambit, I had, yes, I had the armor in there, but I also had mm -hmm. seven weapons to pick between. Right. Now, if I'm in and there, I have the armor and I have 30 weapons to pick between. So them right. trying to like say, hey, the grind's easier to go after something you want, unless I can yeah, like no. narrow down on like world loot pool, I want auto rifles mm -hmm. that I can pick between four. Right. I really have to see this thing in action because as you're saying, it's like, and it does, but the other pieces, it takes the identity away from activities, which is just a yes. weird thing. And it, and it also seems kind of, not fair to say, sneaky because we were told, about, we were just given this whole thing about sunsetting, right? That that was the theme, sunsetting. And then we're just sneakily 
sunsetting <laughs> weapons from an activity that we were told we were going to get more time, you know, come September, whatever it is, to, to rock out before the infusion stops. So it, it, it's just weird messaging. It's a lot of weird messaging going on, man. I, I, this, this sounds very... I, I'm just trying to understand the thought process because my main beefs are, you know, activities lose identity. Because one of the cool things about playing Gambit was like, yo, I can grind for these specific, you know, guns that I'm looking for, bad omen, whatever, right? Each activity had guns tied to it. Now we're throwing everything in this mosh posh soup of a small cup of microwavable chunky soup. <laughs> and now you're telling me this is it. Get it while, you know, it, it's just strange, man. I, I I don't understand it. You know, I'm, I'm really trying, I'm really hoping that we're missing context and that there is something that is going to either be added next season to each individual activity in addition, you know what I'm saying, to what this loot pool beholds. Because as of right now, all that you're telling me is, hey, we're shrinking the, you know, loot. That, that, that's what, it, when you just told me we're not sunsetting stuff until later. So again, which, which one is it? What, what, what's going on here? So two, two follow-up points to that. Um, sure. The first is, I, I find this weird that they would, basically these are all old guns. And so right now, mm -hmm. if you were to go earn these guns, some of these are Forsaken guns. Yeah. Which means if you go get them, they will have the Forsaken symbol on them. And the Forsaken guns get sunset uh, in season 12, correct me if mm -hmm. I'm wrong. Yep. Um, so, but when they reintroduce guns into the world loop pool, like they did last season for like mm -hmm. Last Hope and Hawthorne's uh, Shotgun and a couple other ones, they mm -hmm. actually got the season 9 symbol added to them, which makes them viable beyond right you know in the future now at the time we didn't know that but that, that's right. how it's, that has how, that's how it works now mm -hmm. so presumably these weapons down this new pool will have mm -hmm. the symbol for what is next season which yes. makes them viable longer so what's really yes. really weird to me yes. is why would you go tell me to grind for these guns when they're all going to get sunset after the fact ding, like it's, ding, such ding, a, ding, it's such a weird thing and then my second point to this is uh, Slayer Edge said it really good and one of, uh, really well in one of his recent videos. Mm. He's like, Bungie's like a control freak, but they don't want you to know that they're a control freak. <laughs> like, they, especially because they tell you, like, oh, play the game you want to play. This is an open game where you, like, do whatever you want, but then mm -hmm. they attempt, this is, a, like, a much broader point, but well, I'm simply it, it, but, like, they're basically, like, really trying to control every aspect of the game, and I don't fault them necessarily f for a lot of the decisions they make. Uh, I understand, even though I don't agree with a lot of the things they do, I do understand why they do a lot Same. of the things that they do. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of the decisions in the last few TWABs that they've been talking mm -hmm. about, uh, I guess with the exception of the Eververse one, which I think right. was just unanimously like yeah, good, like, good. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. finally. Uh, <laughs> it, it's just like when I when I like read between the lines and, and mm -hmm. put my cynical hat on yep, me too. Um, and kind of remove like the emotional aspect of, yes, of how too. I'm feeling about it it's kind of like this to me just says that you really want to control the way I play and mm. that's super frustrating because I already feel like I'm being controlled and told how to play right. uh, especially as like an end game player too where it's like, mm -hmm. I, I, like I, I just I still can't play with some of my friends I, yeah. I because of SBMM for example like, it's like mm -hmm. one thing right mm -hmm. but uh Anyway, I don't, I'm not going to get into it. That's like a huge nah, it's all good, like, philosophical nah, problem. That, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. But um, <laughs> it's it's such a weird... I don't know. I, I don't really know what to think of this. I guess, much like Sunsetting, which we'll get to in a sec, I, I, I kind of have to see it to understand yeah. it. Yeah. But there's definitely a communication problem Yes. In regards to this specifically. Yes. Where it's like, why isn't this? This I feel like this should be explained very well, but it's oh, not. Oh, in detail. And it's not. Yeah. It's very, and again, I hate to use the word sneaky, but it, it, it that's how I feel. I, yep. I feel like, you know, you are, you, listen, they have been a masterful job of being transparent these last three to four weeks, right? We're not going to, I'm not going to discredit them in that way. Out of necessity, though. Yes. It, 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 there you go. You just, you're, it, it's out of necessity because we're upset. And, and, yeah. and when we're upset and we stop playing and we push back, you know, daddy lessens the rules. <laughs> right? They, they're, they're also very, sorry to cut you off. They're very, no, please um, go. They're very ma good at this, and they've done this a lot in the past, and people mm -hmm. don't catch on to this, where they'll mm -hmm. intentionally announce what they would consider bad news, yes. and then immediately follow it up with something that's very hype. Yes. What's what's going to happen in two weeks? Trailer. A new season? Oh, yeah. and then That's what I was just about to say. E that, that, yeah, yeah, E3 was supposed to happen, and E3 yes. is where they traditionally announced the fall expansion. Mm -hmm. So 
they did this last year too, right before yes. Shadowkeep during Guardian yes. Con, where they nerfed all our things, then we all yep. forgot about it because Shadowkeep came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't forget. I remember. I remember. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Black we don't forget, brother. Uh, we don't forget. Who are you with? Scar- <laughs> <Yo>? Scar- <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> Skull of Darum Kara still sucks. Skull of the Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, yes. but they, they do this a lot and, done, yes. and this, it wasn't just in Destiny 2 they did this in Destiny 1 a lot too where they mm-hmm. they'll front load really bad news and then shortly yes. after kind of just quietly Boom. announce the thing yes. and then and then we all forget point. about the bad stuff right great and, point and from a from a PR standpoint that's like genius right like, oh yeah yeah and, and it increases the cycles and these waves and, and for mm-hmm. them it's predictable and so they, end, you know, they like probably a, have some metrics yeah this one's like a but, good news sandwich because you had the Eververse then this trash yeah. and then we're mm-hmm. gonna get trailers and reveals and hype 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 so it's like right. they're just no, stuck yeah. in this. It's, this one's in the middle of the burger yep. filling. It's just stuck in the middle. So it's yeah, you, mm-hmm. it's just I don't know. I I give the community team a lot of credit, but I also give them a lot of flack too because they have one of the hardest jobs. Oh, absolutely. But yeah. at the same time, I have to fault them a little bit because games like or companies like Three Four Three or Dice mm-hmm. from Battlefront, um, mm-hmm. or even there's a couple other ones. Uh, their community updates, if you go read them, are mm-hmm. amazing. Like the, yes. the 343 ones for Master Chief Collection, yeah. it's like a 20-page essay. And now, granted, I don't expect everyone to read that, but right. they'll like they'll break down like every single problem they're working on yes. in excruciating detail. Yes. Why it's like that? What? Mm-hmm. Why we needed to fix it, or what we're doing about it? And then Bungie's over here. Sorry, but they're like. Eh, we're changing the world loop pool and <laughs> we're not going to really explain it. It's just kind of going to be there. You're going to figure it out. It's fine. Uh, um, or, or the sunsetting thing too. It's like, we're going to sunset this stuff and we kind of just feel like it because other MMOs have done it, but we're not like, <laughs> we're not really sure why we're doing it. I mean, they probably know why they're doing it, but you know, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm being facetious, but like, oh, I'm trying to make a bigger point that like other companies seem to have this like, like dice with battlefront is that's like such a success story to me because every update was just like super impactful like yes. here's what we're working on here's what we're doing and mm-hmm. bungie sometimes does that like mm-hmm. the last few weeks you know they've get, they've given us a little more deep dive into it but i feel like they just if they just did that every week or like almost every week i'd be so much more happier about destiny even if destiny was like at its worst at least if they came out and were like here are the problems let's mm-hmm. talk about it you know but they don't, and that kind of sucks. And yeah, I yeah. don't think that I, at this point I've just given up on expecting them to change. Yeah, um, I was gonna jump. In. It, it's yeah. This this is um. I think you 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 definitely got it, Teddy, from the standpoint of again, if you look at it face value, you know, without context of what's coming, it don't sound good. It sounds sneaky. It's if sneaky and it feels deceptive. I do agree with you. We are on the cusp of next season content next season marketing push next season trailer once we get icon we forget about all the the, the mess you know that the effery i'm not gonna curse but you know what I'm saying that has happened prior right because we're so and then there's an usually some type of introduction of a new system or new work and i think that's what they it's it's this cycle we, we're in this, this cyclical pattern with them that this is how it goes and you know the, the key with them now is that People are on to it. <laughs> like no, people are it's, on to, it's been you know? six years. Like Yeah. It's 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 like after a while we, we start to understand the cadences of how these things work. And um they they're gonna have a tougher battle because look, I think initially, E, would you say that for the most part, I know me and you had our little thing about exotics, but for the most part, me and you were on the same page, sunsetting had to happen, power creep, the whole bit, right? Yeah. I think the consensus was everybody pretty much agreed with that for the most part. But then again, when you see things like this and you, you, you hear about this loophole and all this other stuff, you know what I'm saying? It, that's going to bring stuff into question. And now people are worried. And then the last point I'll make before I give it to you is that, you know, I'm now, you know what I'm struggling with, y'all? I am now struggling with um, reissue. Oh, that's a huge issue for me. Why Why even? You just told us why this need to happen, but then you're going to remix old stuff. And st- it, it just, I hate to use this word because you know I'm pro development. You're going to say lazy is the word you're going to use. Yeah, no. bro. It just feels lazy. And like, listen, I defend this game more than anybody, but it's just like, you know what people come up to me and say that are non destiny, that are destiny haters? Dude, they just giving you this content all over again. Dude, they just repackaged. This is Curse of Osiris 2.0. Dude, this is Warmind 2.0. Like, they're literally giving you the same. And we're getting Felwinter here. Like, it's hard to fight against those guys that hate the game because, 
you know, it wouldn't like someone said, I don't know where I read it. So technically we can get recluse 2.0 down the down the road. You know what I'm saying? Like, so what was the point? And it, they, they've got to, man, it, I just don't understand the thought process behind reissuing when you just said, yo, sunsetting has to happen for the for the sanctity of the game. You know what I'm saying? Like mixed messaging, but e, I'll give it to you because I you know I'm about to go in. You know no, I'm about to go no, in. I'm trying to... This is just gonna build even more into sunsetting. And mm-hmm. so I'm of the mindset that I, and this is again where I may be leaning on the other side of the fence from you guys, but I'm at mm-hmm. the point where sunsetting I feel like does need to happen. We've kind of come to an accord yeah. on yeah. legendaries to a point, but even mm-hmm. for me, some of the exotics are either buff them or get rid of them because some of them like <laughs> well no like literally Cerberus came up from Z- in Zer today oh yeah no facts and I'm like facts, when the facts. hell's the last time I even thought about that gun yeah facts, facts. either like, like buff it or get I rid did. of it make a different auto rifle or something because some okay. of those things just either need love or use I mean if there's a point where I could at least hey I could use Cerberus I could put like that type mm-hmm. of damage into a overload guy. I can just like mm-hmm. kind of spray bullets at this thing that's coming mm-hmm. at me and I have a pretty good chance to hit it. No, I still can't use the <laughs> the mod slot. I'm going to say it every podcast. I cannot use mm-hmm. mod slots in exotic still, which bugs the hell yeah. out of me because you have things what if they go to more long range stuff next season? You're going to mm-hmm. have pulse rifles, vigilance wing Graviton mm-hmm. lands that I still can't go put those barrier breakers in, and I would just would be nice <laughs> to have a little variety since the exotics go for it. Anyway, we know, we know. No, I know. So for me, the biggest thing is I don't want to keep using. What is the one I'm thinking of? Uh, uh, your favorite? Dad that, no. Well, that one too. <laughs> uh, and that, but that's a prime example. Like I don't want to use mid. I don't want to see people using midnight coup in year five. I shouldn't mm-hmm. be like go figure. In year, like, four, yeah, I had 45,000 kills with my go figure. Yes, I found a replacement for it, but yes, I know eventually it's not going to be viable for in-game stuff. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Like, at some point, things need to, like, evolve and move forward. But also, we're at the point, and some of these perks, what we'll talk about in a second, we've had damage and reload speed be the main things as the drivers, because you want less downtime for your weapon. However Mm -hmm. you get to that one, they've had... They've introduced, like, reload speed four different ways, and now they're literally going to be nerfing all of them. Uh, and then we have damage perks. Kill clip, rampage, multi-kill clip, all, uh, swashbuckler. I mean, how many different ways are you going to add damage to weapons? But again, right. they're still, like, oh, worried about those always being too strong. Right. So my big issue now, as you're saying, and reissuing, but also is my fear of what are they going to introduce in the fall? And right. I'm just going to lead it into this one, and then we can kind of throw sunsetting into all this as well. Yes, so they talk about lock and reload, and they basically mention reload perk updates. We observe players lean towards perks that increase their damage. Mm-hmm. Many no bleeping curse words can be thrown in there, or reduce weapon <laughs> downtime. And again, what is everybody trying to go for, especially if you're going for aspirational content? Efficiency. Mm-hmm. What is the efficiency? Absolutely. I want more damage, and I want less downtime. <laughs> and again, you want, you want to increase that DPS number, especially if you come from something like World. Preach. That DPS number is your sole goal. I want to hit the highest Preach. number of numbers on that enemy that I can in the shortest amount of time. Period. Mm-hmm. Preach. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. That's what everyone wants to go for. Well, we already took the, the, the damage ones down a peg because mm-hmm. those were too strong mm-hmm. and everybody wanted them. Well, now we're going to do it for, you know, efficiency as well. The weapon right. downtime is going to be greater. Right. Uh, the damage perks were adjusted quite a while back, but the reload perks still don't feel like choices. This tuning oh. pass aims to keep them feeling powerful-ish <sighs> without being so dominant that no other choices seem viable. First, mm-hmm. some information, just so you guys understand, they say reload speed. The reload stat mm-hmm. is 0 to 100, and then it maps onto mm-hmm. that weapon's, basically the animation speed of that weapon. It's going to be base speed or increase up to whatever 100 is. Now, depending mm-hmm. on whatever perk it is, you may get a perk like Outlaw, which used to give plus 100. Well, it can't go mm-hmm. over 100, so they would also add a scaler to the animation. So instead of it taking 100% of the time and then kind of multiply it over, they'd take another, like, 20% off of it just to make Mm -hmm. Outlaw run even faster to make sure you always got some effect from it. Right. Got it. All of these perks are going Mm. to be a little bit less effective to bring them down in line with some other perks. Most of the other perks. So you've got Outlaw. The reload stat is going from plus 100, which would basically max it out, to plus 50. Now, if you have something that sits at 50 reload speed... This technically, mm-hmm. will, in the reload stat, would function the same. 
because the plus 50 plus 100 it still caps at 100. Mm -hmm. the reload duration scale is that kind of multiplier to the animation they are taking that from 0.8 so 20 percent to 0.9 so a 10 percent reduction so that's no matter what 10 percent slower plus you're only mm -hmm. going to get plus 50 so it's going to be a little bit slower so that's outlaw right. slowed it down that's a little outlaw. bit Feeding yeah. Frenzy, this was strictly better than Outlaw. So we're changing the functionality based on the number of rapid kills. So with mm -hmm. two kills, it's equal to Outlaw, the updated version. With three kills, mm -hmm. it's faster. Four kills, it's the fastest reload in the game, except Alloy Mag. And then mm -hmm. they said the max possible duration scale uh, was 0.83 to 0.8. So it can be fast if you get four kills. And mm -hmm. the max possible reload stat is still at plus 100, but they don't break down everything. They don't go plus two kills is this and this. Plus three kills mm -hmm. is this and this. They still leave the vagary in there, which we just got done talking about. They're like, here's yeah, some no. information, but yep. not quite all of right. it. So here's all some numbers, but not all of it. Mm -hmm. Rapid hit. Everybody's spare oh rations that they wanted. They wanted rapid oh hit rangefinder. I have one of those. By sheer, <laughs> by sheer luck, by the way. I didn't grind wow, for it. Salute. Salute. Gave a huge amount of reload and stability for very little work. It front-loaded the first precision hit. We've updated it, so it feels still feels good, but isn't quite as powerful. Again, mm -hmm. that's almost like a contradictory statement. It still feels good, but it's not as strong. Does it still feel good? Mm -hmm. Br brace for impact. <laughs> <laughs> Adjusted stacking bonuses to give less benefit for the first hit and more for subsequent hits. Max reload stat, max possible reload stat from 100, it's down to 60. Mm. So it caps at that. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, remember, this was front loaded. So you would start at 100 versus the other or wherever it hit first max possible reload duration scale was t like 0.8 now it's 0.925 so it's more than half as slow and the max mm -hmm. possible stat stability stat was plus 50 which is huge for stability that's down to 25 so it's definitely going to feel weaker drop mag um situationally they basically made it match outlaw Field prep yeah. is unchanged, but they just gave you a point of reference on it, that its reload stat is plus 50, and the duration scale is 0.8, so that's the same. And then Alloy Mag, uh, it's unchanged, but for reference, Alloy Mag, the mm -hmm. reload animation, is literally a third faster, which is a big difference. So that one's pretty damn quick. Um, yeah. There's some other perks in here they mentioned. They said they're fixing an issue where perks grant partial weapon ammo did not respect shot count, so they're talking about like pulse rifles, Fusion rifles, which the only thing I could imagine is like Bastion. I don't know why those pulses or fusions are listed in there. And burst sidearms, where it fires multiples and it's just Multiple. multiplying weird. Yeah. So these perks, these said perks, are going to be more common on the weapon archetypes. Slide shot, slide ways, ambitious assassin, subsistence, which I don't care about most of those. Overflow, mm -hmm. lead from gold is okay. Clown cartridge has potential. So again, yeah. if I can't have efficiency, at least my clip might be bigger. Overflow and clown, mm -hmm. clown cartridge are the only two I see is positive. Mm -hmm, uh, they're doing mm -hmm. some perk tuning. They are taking dynamic yeah, sway before, reduction. But before you jump into that, I, yeah. just because I don't, I don't want to. You want to talk about the reloads? Point. Yeah, I, I don't want to let them off on that. Okay, um, <laughs> not, I was gonna do all of them, but yeah, we can do this one. Yeah, right I, now. I, just, I just was talking that one only because I, I know I'm gonna forget. But it's just again, you read the initial paragraph about reload perk updates, right? Bungie says the dam they were adjusted, the damage perks were adjusted, damage perks specifically. But reload perks still don't feel like choices. These are these words. So when I read that sentence, you are now setting me up for buffs. You are you are now setting me up mentally that good things are about to happen for reload perks. And then you consequently, each sentence is is nerf or, you know, it's still going to be strong. Just not but, strong. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm you know what I'm it, 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 it just, again, messaging, verbiage, right? What, these are conflicting messages. You, 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 go, you literally go through Feeding Frenzy, Outlaw, and Old Rapid Hit, and proceed to tell me how they are now going to be worse in some way. Even if it's just minutely, statistically, it is, they are going to be worse. So I don't understand why even say that these don't feel like choices, so now we're gonna do something about it, and then you do this, so I, I'm, I'm confused. Now the next segment, I know we're gonna talk about possibly buffs, but I, again, it, it just bothered me. I was, just, I shout out to Asakrov, I think he said the same thing. We were just like, you know, I, I don't understand the thought process there. Please help me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, 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 I don't, you, Teddy, what do you think, man? Just about the reload stuff, I, I'm, am I bugging out? I mean, look, I've said this a lot. I've said this to you guys. Mm -hmm. the, 
smartest and best players will always figure out the most efficient way to do something. Facts. And reload perks and damage perks, damage perks mm -hmm. that got nerfed, I believe, with the Shadow Keep update, right. um, have always, not always, they've generally been the go to perks. Uh, a, because they do provide that um, optimal loadout, and B, those perks are also very easy to see in moment-to-moment -moment gameplay yeah. versus something like Zen Moment, for example. or yeah, sat More or, satisfaction from it. Yeah, yeah or, or whatever, right? Like, mm -hmm. like, these perks are... You can see the effect of the perk happening mm -hmm. when you're playing. Uh, mm -hmm. And a part of that is with, like, the vagueness that Bungie, unfortunately, has a lot right. of their perks. So, like, mm -hmm. for example... Drewski did a video on moving target and I think dynamic sway reduction, which is like one of the best explanations of how those mm -hmm. perks function. And those perks have been in the game since D1. They were just changed in D2 slightly, but they yeah. but they existed. But we never fully understood how they worked until somebody sat down. And I don't know if he was the first one, but he was definitely the one that explained it the best from what I could find. Um, and that's, I mean, this is a bigger point where it's just like, like they, they have it in here. Like they don't explain mm -hmm. uh, the different tiers of feeding frenzy. Like why wouldn't you just that's like four extra lines. Just, right. just explain just the explain. different. Yeah, like I, why, why does the community have to constantly figure? Like they just, they just finally broke down aim assist like two months ago in like super extreme yes. detail, and that blows my mind because mm -hmm. this game has been around for six years, and as mm -hmm. far as we know, aim assist mostly worked the same in D one as it did in D two. Mm -hmm. So like, why, do, why I. It just like really irks me when they like don't want to give us this information. I don't, I don't understand why they're so afraid that mm -hmm. players will get upset. Now going back to the reload stuff, this is really unfortunate, uh, and it, it's kind of a bummer. Mm -hmm. But I understand why they have to do it. But it mm -hmm. again, it's also just like, why would you tell me that you're gonna buff something, but then you like don't ding, buff ding, the ding, thing? Ding 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 ding. It's listen and shout out to Aries and Prescott. We 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 always go at it. The chat. I love those two, and. Again, we get it, right? Especially we know as the TWAB is going to go on, they're going to introduce new perks and, you know, we're going to talk about some other perks and stuff like that. But again, you can't tell people that you're going to, that, you know, that these things are not options and we're going to do something about it. And then you would need to go, go bad hammer and nerf hammer. Again, you just got to, you got to be more transparent and you got to message a little correctly because this way you won't get... Any 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 pushback, any lashbacks. I, I I'm just trying to help them out, like, because it, it doesn't feel good. But continue. I'm sorry. Continue. No, I mean that's that's basically it. like it's. Mm -hmm. I understand why, but it's also mm -hmm. like it. I this is like super cynical to think about it this way, Let's but go. unfortunately, I have to think about it Let's like this go. with Destiny. I feel like they very intentionally spaced out the, the all the nerfs in the last year, like like they had this all planned out from like a year ago, and they've just like very carefully, strategically spaced it out month by month. Brace for um, impact. So that way, people don't get like super super upset. Yeah. Um, because basically, since they did the the reckoning uh, nerf, but right before Guardian Con, mm -hmm. I feel like it's just been like nerf after nerf after nerf to our overall ability in the sandbox. Like, yes, they mm -hmm. buffed specific things and like auto rifles or, or mm -hmm. things like that. But in general, mm -hmm. where we were at pre-July of last year versus now, like mm -hmm. we as Guardians suck. Like, <laughs> like we, uh, I, I don't know, we're, we're just, I mean, on the one hand, <sighs> that, that that's an extreme example because we were very powerful at that yes, point. Yes. But at the same time, like, we just keep going down and down and down a peg, and then mm -hmm. this will lead into sunsetting. But like now, you're gonna ask me to regrind everything, including my armor, mm -hmm. and so it's like I'm basically resetting. But I'm, it's, it just goes back to that fact of like they want to control every aspect of the game. But I just let me play the game the way I want to play the game. Yeah, like yeah. it shouldn't it shouldn't matter. And I don't know, like the the some of the buffs were a little bit interesting, and I'm still not gonna put hip fire grip on. We haven't gotten to that yet, but like <laughs> yeah. Forget um, it. it was either Astacross or Fallout that was just like, stop trying to make hip fire grip happen. Yeah. <laughs> well, Somebody, also, one of the two said that, and I can't remember, and I was just, I'm thinking the same thing. And I love how one of the bullet points is, it has no effect on sniper rifles. Like, it shouldn't be on there in the first place. Oh, wait, I don't, in the first that, place. That's what I was going to say. It can roll on a why sniper rifle. And same thing why? with shotguns. Shotguns can roll with outlaw that aren't slug shotguns. And it's yeah. like, why does why? this have outlaw on it? Like, this doesn't why? make any sense. No yeah. sense. Um, Mm -hmm. So stuff like that. I'm like, I'm not gonna put sneak bow on. Sorry, Bungie. No, like, just, I'm not. You not excited sorry. about that? Yeah. You not, yo? They thought about you, man. <laughs> I'm sorry if you're a bow fan, but guess what? There, there, there's like two bows coming in after season twelve, unless they introduce new bows. So you're kind of screwed either way. So. Oh yeah, there's like sorry. no bows right now. Period. So yeah. all of us are kind of screwed. 
But even for me, is like when it comes to bows, I've literally used a bow in my solo flawless run of Shattered Throne. I used Mm -hmm. a bow in my solo flawless run of Pit of Heresy. So like I find Mm -hmm. uses and they give a little bit of a perk for that 10% PVE buff. And I was like, that's literally why I put minor spec on my bow in Pit of Heresy because I couldn't one shot the Acolytes because it's like, I just didn't feel right. And they have this little sliver Mm -hmm. left. So at least somebody probably has that same feeling as I do on that one. But again, Sneak Bow. That better, they better not do more perks like Sneak Bell, otherwise I will not be thrilled. And I guess this mm. is my biggest thing. Like, they talk about dynamic sway reduction, and that's the big one between multiple people. Yeah. They're saying, hey, dynamic sway reduction is already pretty good. Now it mm-hmm. adds 10 stability over time on top of the accuracy. So mm-hmm. this thing's actually going to be really solid for things that are, like, continually firing bullets a lot. And auto rifles mm. that take advantage of this are going to be just, like, potential lasers if you get the right recoil. They're going to be potentially mm-hmm. good, like... That's one of the good ones. Pulse monitor. You take critical damage. Now, if you swap to your shotgun, it's literally fully reloaded. Right. So, like, it auto-reloads, plus 50 handling, faster weapon speed, works on stowed mm-hmm. weapons. I was like, cool. Hip fire grip. I literally look at him like, I don't even care. It's adding, like, 1.2 times aim assist, plus 15 aim assist, plus mm-hmm. 1.7 degrees precision hip fire angle threshold. And I'm going, that is just a <laughs> sentence in itself just to say all of that. And I'm like... <laughs> Hold on. What? The average person reads this and going, excuse me? This is the mm-hmm. point where, like, I've seen the Mercules, like, the the range, cone, and accuracy graph that they'll mm-hmm. do, and, like, Fallout's mm-hmm. used it before, and they've gone through, and those guys have done this, and I was like, this is one of those points, as you said, if it was a different company putting this thing out, hey, this is what we mean. If you're up above this character here at this point, you would see this like mm-hmm. this. If hip fire grip was on, your reticle would be this much tighter. It would, And that would be a way to like show visually yeah, to say... Visual representation yeah, would be nice. Hey, you're like two pixels off of this dude's head, but you have that extra mm-hmm. hip fire grip aim assist. Guess what? That bullet's going to curve and still hit him. Mm-hmm. Without it, you would have missed that shot and it would have been body. But what if Bungie's thinking about the community and guys like Fallout and Merkley can have our video? That's what it is. Thinking about the community they're, so we they're can They're letting create. them make the content as opposed to clearly <laughs> explaining it to us. They can still make the video because not everybody reads this stuff and people just follow them. But, like, mm-hmm. if I sit there and read literally plus 1.7 degrees precision hip fire angle threshold, nowhere in mean? the game is that, is that stated at all. Much yeah. less when they talk about dynamic story reduction. They say add 10 stability. Okay, I understand what that stat means. Over time, in addition to accuracy, where is accuracy stated in the game? Nowhere. It's Nowhere. on the range stat. Yep. Yeah. Hidden which light. is which is not a number in the game. <laughs> right. So uh, like, it's like I, dynamic sway reduction has potential to be cool. If you get an auto rifle with it, hold the hell on to that one because that is potential. Pulse monitor. You know that point. If you're going to be running, you know, an auto rifle with dynamic sway reduction and pulse monitoring, you like shotgunning. Hey, I'm running in. Hey, I got switch. Switch shotgun. Like you're going to be mm. fully loaded, good to go. Has potential. Hip fire grip mm. and sneak bow could have cared less. Like if you're going to drop me some perk retuning knowledge, don't give me the two that are like people don't really tend to care about them. <laughs> That's just yeah. me. No, um, I hate you, brother. I hate you. So a couple more things. Uh, new Let's perks. Go. We're going to be getting two new perks on two reprised weapons next season. Sorry about my tone of voice, but that's pretty (laughs) obvious. Laying it on real thick there. Thick. There you go. The two new perks are called Iron Grip and Iron Gaze. Any thoughts of what those might do? Ready? Um... I would imagine that Iron Grip has something to do with stability or accuracy, mm-hmm. and then Gaze is probably like a range thing. Yeah. Um, but I don't know what they would do because mm-hmm. I don't know. Like I, I don't. Yeah. I read this and was kind of like, meh. Next paragraph. <laughs> like, uh, it's really unfortunate that Iron Banner has just been like, oh, like they're. Yeah. It, it it's like that like cup in the office that you like flick little pieces of like paper into and like, and that's like they're like ah oh, we'll just flick this this paper and it's like ah oh, we'll put new perks on this that'll satisfy the iron banner problem and we'll, and we'll bring back this armor from how many seasons has it been oh it's been it's been eight seasons it's fine now we could bring it back like that's that's uh, that's I mean it's again a really facetious way of looking at it but like that's how I feel they kind of treat iron banner and it's really unfortunate because yeah, I I like iron banner Same for the most thing. part uh, S- SBMM kind of sucks mm-hmm. but um. It's yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think the perks are? I'm, I'm yeah. just ranting at this point. No, I, I'm I, I, very I mean, vague. Stability you know, in either a scope stability. on a sniper rifle or a zoom. I don't. Yeah, again, it's like I don't yeah. know what they're coming on. Grip seems like iron grip. Am I like is handling lower, but stability's like 
just rock solid or mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. again, I don't know if it's a give and take yeah. situation. Iron Gaze we have the what is it, the hockey one where you highlight people. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, I don't know if they'd ever even get that creative, honestly. I just picture a specific scope. Like I don't I don't know as a perk especially, not like a scope or a reload perk, like an actual perk is weird. I don't know what that's going to do. I'm very confused on that one. Yeah, pretty much the same. I guys, look at I them think... and I put them in fear. No, <laughs> yeah, like I almost feel um, maybe gaze. The only thing I, I would take a, a specific shot at is maybe gaze is. Well, they, well, they already have no distractions because I was already thinking about like a, you know, what's the word flinch, kind of perk. But um, yeah, I don't know. They, they very... don't. They don't like flinch perks. They don't like flinch perks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Flinch perks are no no in Bungie's book. Yeah, look, I'm 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 gonna be positive and give them a little benefit of the doubt, and hopefully these might be cool. But it's it's like Teddy said, it's just like you know, it's just you know, throw throw something mind banners way that flick, you know, and it's just like all right, you know, it's supposed to satisfy us. We'll see, you know. Hopefully these perks can be really cool, and you know, we we come up with some meta around it uh, tied to specific weapons and guns and stuff. And you know, I, I would just hope that um, while we're getting these perks that we get weapons, new weapons, inside Iron Banner to use these perks because that, to me, would be the ultimate coolness. Well, they're you know, two actually. reprised weapons. They're they're new. They're new for now. They're new this season. <laughs> I, I think it was a huge slap in the face. Uh, I think it was this season that the armor they brought back was the second time it was brought back, and that was like. I, I, Again, I'm not a developer, so I don't. I'm not gonna pretend like I understand how long like it takes got to make an armor one, set. Year two and Ooh. year three, <laughs> but like, really, yeah, uh, dude. Year three of Iron Banner and Destiny One was oh, so good, so good. And the armor and the weapon, oh. like, like if even if you just brought that back, that goes back. That's I, what I'm saying. I, I would be like, cool. I don't need a lore reason for it to be back. I don't need to know that it was <laughs> that was Ephrodite that brought it back. Just, just. I don't need Saladin to have new voice lines. Yes. Just put that stuff in the game. Like you, you already made it. Clever Dragon was awesome. Like uh, uh, Saladin's visual. No, where's my Nerwin's Mercy at? Let's yeah, go. Yeah, like, oh. like there's, it, uh, there's just. There's so much they could do, and it, it's just like they're always so close, but so Ooh, far, so and it's so far. frustrating. So frustrating. And again, they, they they're just talking about reissue, and it's like you're they're sitting on gold mines of things in the vault that literally could be reissued, and the community would have no issue, right? No problem with seeing anything. Like like they say, we wouldn't care about no lore attached to it. We would just so be so happy to see it and excited. It's just it, it's just mind boggling to me, you know, it, like to me, I think sometimes like again, again, it could be resource issue. But, you know, it, it just seems that certain things just sit and sit and just decay. And we're like, what's going on with this? How about giving this some love? And it's just I mean, D- yeah. DMG explained this season that and this was shocking to me to hear this, that what do you say? making the trials weapons. Yep was a choice between having that or uh, ritual weapons this season, which is why we didn't get ritual weapons this season besides yep. the bow, wow. which was then later confirmed that the bow was actually supposed to be part of last season, yep. but they wow. cut it to introduce it this season, which means wow. the bow wasn't even made for this season. So wow. they their resources, I guess, are so tight that they had to yes. choose between trials weapons mm. and ritual weapons. And that when he said that, I was like, whoa, like what? Put you yeah. in perspective. I, I, I right? mean, I guess if it's, it's that hard to make mm-hmm. interesting weapons, then I mean, per- perks are par- part of the problem too. Right. But um, and trials is a whole nother like slew of issues that I don't know if you guys want to get into that. But that that mm-hmm. that was just oh. like a whole other oh, problem. Yeah, we've, it's we hammered that yeah. nail hard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unfortunate for them, but yeah. yeah. I was like, and that's and we talked about it before when they said, "Hey, this will be coming in season 13 and you're like. Hope you're happy for about six plus months because it's not right. changing. And we also said it's like, hey, the cheating needs fixed. And if they fix a bunch of other things, they understand like the loot and those other things. Maybe tokens aren't in there. The bounties come back. All those things like come with fresh stuff that would give it a little right. bit of life. Because like if you just fix like, hey, the trials loot pool is better. Well, cheating's still here. I don't care. Like mm-hmm. they're they're moving stuff farther out. Right. So let me get uh, through these last. last oh, I was no, just going to get through yeah, these yeah, last yeah, two yeah, little buffs. Yeah. And then yeah, I'm just to. literally going to tie this all into the big boy topic. Mm-hmm. Let's go. So the upcoming archetype buffs that we've got. Slug shotguns getting PvE damage of 30%. Woo! Cool. Like. 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 Thank you. Praise. Yeah. Praise. High Praise. impact pulse rifles. Picture your red ricks. Which you won't be using for very long, but still. I know, I know. High impact pulses the- get, and this is again PvP, so technically you probably could for a while. Uh, mm-hmm. Not 
aspirational. Uh, high impact mm-hmm. pulse rifles. This is where it, some of the numbers that they go through, they're so small. I remember the auto rifle buff of like 0.003% or whatever. <laughs> Do you remember that buff? In like D- yeah, I remember that. It's like D1, D1. or year one of this or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. But yeah, high mm-hmm. impact pulse rifles damage per bullet is from 21 to 22. Now, there's a crit oh. multiplier in there, but they said this changes mm-hmm. from six crits to five crits in one body to make them a little easier to use. Mm-hmm. But technically, the kill time is not different. You just have a little more forgiveness in it. Uh, mm-hmm. Bow PD mm-hmm. damage versus miners, 10%. Thank you. That one we talked about. This one, I'm sure, is going to piss off a lot of people because the way I read this, it's going the direction mm-hmm. people do not want. Let's go. Let's get to it. Sniper rifles. Community feedback has been that Revoker <laughs> and Beloved... Dominate. Yes, we are fully aware yes, of that do. one. We're aware of and that. looking at analytics, they account for 86% of sniper usage in the Crucible. And if we include other low zoom sniper rifles, that number gets even higher. Why is it higher? Because a lot of people use low zoom scopes and they prefer yes. them. We're yes. specifically looking at how zoom translates into ease of use for sniper rifles. We're looking Ooh. into investigating changes that make choosing a sniper rifle zoom more of an interesting choice. Yeah. Now, Woo-hoo. I know how I read that. I just want to see read, how you I read it. You, I, I, I literally w- laid on the way I read that sentence is how I read it. But how did you say guys take specifically. that one? Say it specifically first. Then we go. Okay, I got for to me, this. the way I read that is they're going to be like, if you want to use low zoom, the perks that you get to go with that one are not going to be good. Like if, you're, <laughs> if your sniper rifle has a mm-hmm. low zoom scope option, good luck finding snapshot sights, opening shot. Mm-hmm. None of the good perks are going to come mm-hmm. with that low zoom. Because right. if you use the high zoom, hey, then maybe you can use those more fun perks. Right. But that sniper right. ease of use, about to get harder use. That's the way Teddy, I read it. How, that's, that's, Teddy, that's, exa- that's exactly how I read it, too. It's okay. like, oh, you want to use a low zoom scope because our maps are really small? <laughs> Sorry, those coveted perks that you like, you're not going to be able to use those. And guess what? We're sunsetting the old ones, so you can't use those anymore. Oh, sorry. Like, ooh, what a, what a disappointment. Um, yeah. What, what kind of... Mm-hmm. So, there's this little-known franchise called Halo. Yes. What? I don't think... I, I, I think the studio called Bungie oh, yeah. made it. I think this studio sure. made it. I yeah, think yeah. this studio. Yeah. And in, that game, in those podcast, games... Just salt bane here all night long. There's, uh, there's a sniper rifle in that mm-hmm. game. And uh, also a yeah. little-known fact about that sniper rifle. It has double zoom. Yes! Uh, you can zoom in twice. Tell, yes! Magnification, yes. Why is that just not an option? Ooh. Like... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I I've been playing um, playing a lot of Halo lately, specifically mm-hmm. Master Chief Collection. And my brother is my brother's a diehard Halo fan. Nice. Um, that's like his thing, and so we've, we've been going th- we've been going through Halo One, Two, Reach, and stuff, and mm-hmm. particularly Reach, playing playing through Reach again because that's the closest thing to Destiny. Uh, yeah. Since Destiny One was built off the Reach engine, and yeah. Destiny Two built off that, mm-hmm. uh, I noticed a lot of similarities that I had not noticed previously. Mm-hmm. Uh, playing through the game again, mm. and. I was, Particularly how the weapons behave. So, for example, the grenade launcher in that game is basically mountaintop, what? Or, or, it's, or it's or it's a breach load. It's a breach, breach load. load? Yeah, because because you have to release the trigger to blow it up. But the animation is basically mountaintops uh, reload and and just like the way we- like scout rifles in that game, or the DMR feels the same as scout rifles, stuff like mm-hmm. that. And mm-hmm. and reach is not a perfect game by any right. means. Uh, mm-hmm. But looking at that game, it was like you got a lot of stuff right here, yeah. and then you got a lot of stuff right in Destiny One. Why is it wrong in Destiny 2? <laughs> yeah. It's been 10 years. Like, yeah. uh, it, It's just so frustrating. But uh, what do you think about the sniper rifle changes? I mean, you guys are on it. I mean, the, the only thing I would say is just that, you know, this is their way of saying that they're going. When I, when I read the word, uh, we're going to make interesting change and make more uh, sniper rifles more of an interesting choice. To me, then, it also means that these zooms that are hated they are going to force those perks to, or that we like on those items so that it'll say, okay, well, now I got to take it. You know what I'm saying? And again, it kind of goes back to your point, Teddy, of controlling. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and forcing us down paths that necessarily, like they're, they're looking at trades. They're very analytical. They're very, they're very statistical. We know they are looking at usage rates, all these things. And they're seeing that these other zooms are not being utilized right so this is their way of trying to force us into that direction and it's just you know it's just uh, what they do I just yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that being said mm-hmm. the other zooms aren't necessarily bad in their right. current state the problem is that the mm-hmm. the pvp maps aren't designed 
for those zooms, uh, particularly the, the long range ones. I guess the medium one could, you could argue that for certain maps. Right. Um, and again, like a medium zoom sniper with snapshot, opening shot, or whatever, quick draw, mm -hmm. you know, whatever perks you need on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a PvP buff, so I'm just kind yeah. of vaguely talking here, but like, mm -hmm. It's still usable with the medium yeah. zoom. Maybe not necessarily the long range zoom, but you could right. use it on certain maps. Right. So yeah, again, just reading this, it just it just sounds like it's like, all right, you want the short one? You're gonna have to use these crummy perks that we made. Yeah. You get um, hip fire grip and pulse monitor. <laughs> oh my god, don't you? That, that is a possible. <laughs> that is a possible role on some snipers. Oh my, that is awful. That is that's awful. That is not appealing. But I was but like, yeah, that's, that's, that's that was. I mean. I've, I've mm -hmm. been trying to gather as much community feedback as I can. I've listened to like every podcast about sunsetting I've listened to. Uh, mm -hmm. When it comes to like this one, I was like asked across in Fallout, and they're like, mm -hmm. "Don't, don't." And even Fallout was just like, "Don't, don't, don't go too crazy with our sniper rifles." It was that yeah. kind of tone. It's yeah. like it's there. Uh, and we this, just came off the sniper rifle PVE. The, oh yeah, smash damage yeah. nerf. Yep, uh, continue. Which was, which was a buff that they undid six months later. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of buffs uh, that they undid a little bit later, uh, mm -hmm. were the uh, adaptive auto rifle buffs. That's your 600. Uh, Arch Lo Arc Logic, Suros, the uh, Gnawing Hunger, the ones everybody are using right now, uh, we're not rolling summoner. back the Season 10 buff per se, <laughs> but we're adjusting the tuning a little to give other auto rifle subframes a chance to shine. So that yeah. one's coming back down some. Not all, so, but so, some. Yeah. Uh, hand cannons, yeah. they said they were valuing hand cannon subfamilies. People have been asking mm -hmm. about 110s and 140s forever. Cause, yeah, facts, facts, uh, facts. As an example, we're breaking I'll out aggressive hand cannons to let us tune their range independently of others. So like Duke, potentially, yeah, Duke, is going to yeah, have a farther range, for example. It was a Kremel's Dagger, all that, one, the 110. The 110s need love. I, I, like, I, I'm, I, I'm I not kind of thought they could do this already, I feel like, mm -hmm. but I guess, like, not... <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, I think the one tens. It's yeah. not gonna matter though, because they're all gonna get sunset. <laughs> oh yeah, I've got like twelve dukes, and I went through and cleared out most of them, and it's still all of those. Like, but if you like the duke, so you're just gonna have the to the side of us knows. Come on, y'all. We know new content is coming where they're gonna introduce new one tens to make them. It's the cycle. We know how this goes. They they they, they brace. It sounds awful now, which it does. But they're bracing for impact because then it comes we see the new stuff and it's something we remember and it's pretty color and shiny. It looks cool and it's tied to some artifact mechanic. We'll come up with new strats and I get it. I get it. It's just, you know, it's just it's what we go through. It's what we go yeah. <laughs> through being a Destiny fan. So all this ties back into last week and now that we've got another party in here, it's all mm -hmm. about the sun setting. So yes, sir. before we get into kind of how some of this stuff ties in. I wanted to get kind of Teddy's thoughts just on the general thoughts of sunsetting, any like thoughts you've heard from other people and just kind of where you stand at this point on just the sunsetting going into year 12, knowing what's not going to be available, kind of knowing what is that type of stuff. Just where are you standing on the sunsetting idea for where we're at? So my initial reaction when I read it was I was very upset. Uh, now I was not really playing a lot at that time. I got, I, I was really busy with work. And so it was kind of, I was just kind of taking a break from destiny in general. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's been a while since I've taken a break this long and it, it's honestly felt really good. But when I first read that, I was like, this is, I'm not okay with this. Um, and I, the more I read other people's takes on it and the more I kind of thought about it as I would kind of go about my day, um, the more I kind of like lean towards the middle, but I'm still not okay with it. Right. Um, I I understand the argument for it. Yes. Um, and I've I understand why people have a very emotional attachment to certain things, or, or I guess an emotional argument, if you will, right. uh, for it. Um, but it the cynical side of me is thinking this is Bungie's way <laughs> of of just controlling everything I do in this game mm -hmm. and forcing me to replay stuff. And we ta we ta touched on this earlier, but I would have been mostly fine with it mm -hmm. if they just didn't reintroduce anything thank you uh thank you. i like and again we haven't so this is like broadening the entire scope of mm -hmm. what i'm going to talk about but like we haven't seen it yet everything they're yes. talking about is just on paper and it true. could change it, unlikely true. to change given the way they report information to us mm -hmm. um but it could change uh, mm -hmm. and it might not be as bad as we think it is so I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt because I always give them the benefit of the doubt. But I'm also going to be pretty critical of it when it sucks or if it sucks um, or if it's just does not execute right. 
Um, that being said, so there's this argument. Uh, I wanted to get into this. So there's this argument that the magic, the gathering argument, that constantly gets thrown around, or the analogy, I guess, Let's get if it. You know, where people compare this to Magic the Gathering. Now, I did not play, I never really played Magic me the Gathering until, so until, about, until about a year and a half ago. I played a little bit, uh, Steven, Rue, and uh, James Duggan. I was, I was visiting San Francisco, and we went, we went to like a Magic, uh, they play a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, we went to like a Magic Pack uh, event, and uh, very similar to Yu-Gi-Oh, which I come from a Yu-Gi-Oh background, which I'll also nice. touch on, because that game functions nice. very differently than Magic. Okay. And I think that's actually a better analogy than uh, mm. the Magic set rotation. That's what Drewski um, talked about, actually, so keep going. Yeah. Okay, Magic yeah. Um, so... So in Magic the Gathering, there's what's called set rotation. Other card games like Hearthstone also implement this. I haven't played Hearthstone, so I'm not super familiar with that. But the gist of it is is that mm-hmm. every X amount of time, there is a set of cards that are legal in, in a certain format. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then after that time, those cards get rotated out. Sound okay. familiar? It sounds like yes. sunsetting, right? Sounds like sunsetting. And, and Luke Smith even compared it to Magic the Gathering in his yes. um, director's cut. Mm-hmm. Where I think this analogy is really bad from a like logical standpoint, um, mm-hmm. given my background in logic and... and my phil- philosophical um, know what mm-hmm. uh, I think it's a bad analogy because you're talking about a card game that is a turn based game when you're playing a turn based game in a we'll, we'll remove the tournament setting for a second because there's a time limit in tournaments but when you're playing a turn based game you have all the time in the world like chess right. to make your move to make your right. decision and pick what you want and you know that in the confines of that specific game that you're playing these cards will all work. But in the context of Destiny, that's mm-hmm. different. Because right. in Destiny, it's not a turn-based game. I don't have all the time to, in the world to make a decision, Reach. and I need to actively think about my loadout based Reach. on the activity I'm going into. Reach it. Uh, and so that that kind of bothered me a little bit when people mm-hmm. were kept comparing it to Magic in I, that so I sense. I hate when people do one-for-one one comparison to yeah. other games. Uh, <laughs> from, so from a little <clears throat> little logic lesson here for a second, a analogies game. are actually are, are like the are the worst <laughs> type of argument um, in general because analogies are really easy to break down. Yeah, it's you you can make all the similar you can compare two things and have all the similarities in the world, but if I find one difference, your argument automatically becomes weaker oh, than it was you do you, you don't say so you don't yeah. say it's a one-to-one relationship to wow because you know i hear that on this podcast well, all the so, time because so you know, in wow oh, we that, did oh, oh god but continue Bungie, to preach <laughs> you know that was awesome that was awesome what you did. continue <laughs> Bungie, Bungie keeps comparing mm-hmm. they keep they keep calling well, they recently in the last year have started calling destiny an mmo finally but, I, but finally right we kept mm-hmm. wanting them to do that and I don't know if this is true or not, but I feel like it was Activision who didn't want that label on the game because they possibly, were afraid yeah. of, the, of the connotations. That's possible. Uh, and, I, and I understand that from a, mm-hmm. from a PR standpoint. And I was glad when they called it an MMO, finally, after all this yes. time. Yes. But they they like want it to be an MMO, but then do things that are MMO-ish and also that are not MMO-ish that don't work in Destiny. So it, it, it's kind of weird. Like The whole idea of sunsetting comes from the MMO RPG background yeah. and, and card games as well. Uh, going back to the Magic thing real quick, so Magic the Gathering is made by Wizards of the Coast and they have, like I think, 20 or 30 years of experience. Yeah. And so they understand very well how to rotate things in and out of the game. Right. Now, where I'll bring Yu-Gi-Oh in, Yu-Gi-Oh is kind of a unique card game and I actually have experience with this because I played Yu-Gi-Oh competitively and I actually shout, recently oh, lost... Shout out to Attic. He played, he's the same yeah. way he played competitively. I learned I, about the game through him. Continue. Yeah, I played... Um, I actually just recently got back into it in the last year, and I, I stopped because of the virus, unfortunately, because yeah. you can't go you can't go to events. But I'm, st- events. I'm I'm still keeping up with it and kind of like going into it. And mm-hmm. and so Yu-Gi-Oh is very unique because it actually doesn't have a set rotation. It has what's called a forbidden and banned list. It's so where every every few months, three to six months, depending on whatever Konami feels like or what's going on in the meta, they mm-hmm. will either just outright ban a card or limit a card or semi-limit really? a card. Um, and it could come back in the future, and that's kind of the, that's kind of the crazy part about Yu-Gi-Oh is that technically you could use any card in the game so long as it's not banned um, in an official tournament, or even even if you're just playing like casual, as long as you're following that ban mm-hmm. list. There's only one ban list. There, uh, there's two official formats, but nobody plays the the second of the two. They just play the one that has the ban and limited list. And okay. so what what makes this super unique is mm-hmm. Konami every so often will unban really old cards that, hmm. pe- that at the time that they were banned were really, really broken and right. like super, super overpowered. But mm-hmm. then they unban them and almost almost always not always, but almost always, they end up being either kind of useless because they got power crept by something that was better, mm. or they end up becoming good but not broken because other cards have been made to balance that mm-hmm. uh that act and obviously just like magic the gathering was the coast konami has just as much as experience with or close to as with making the card game so they understand 
most right. of the time. They have made some mistakes in the past. Most of the time with how to make a balanced card. Mm-hmm. So this is where I'm getting to. This is long winded. Get, I'm, 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 I'm loving it. You're bringing I'm, it all I'm getting, away. I'm getting the bungee part. So let's bungee, get it, baby. Woo! Bungee, based on prior experience and mm-hmm. how they've nerfed and buffed things, I don't feel like they fully understand mm-hmm. how to balance the problematic mm-hmm. things in the game. They've gotten close in the current state of Destiny, but I feel like they always just swing a little bit too far one way or the other. Right. And so when you talk about set rotation in the context of Magic, mm-hmm. it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily apply one for one to Destiny. Yes, there are similarities, and yes, it could work. But where I am, I sort of have a, I've lost faith in them. Is that they will mm-hmm. they will reintroduce perks that I care about on guns, mm-hmm. or even for that matter, reintroduce the guns that matter. Because for me, as an optimal player, mm-hmm. you know, if I have a grenade launcher that is, we'll say hypothetically, eighty percent of the max possible damage I could do with that grenade launcher, right. I want to go grind for the grenade launcher that is best in the game with the optimal Facts. perks. Efficiency. And when, I, and when yes. I finally earn that, I want to be able to use it for as long as possible. I understand right. I'm in the minority when I say this. Because mm-hmm. I, I, from based on the arguments I was seeing, or the takes I was seeing for people, it mm-hmm. seems like people want new interesting things to chase. But for me, mm-hmm. I just want to get that 1% better when I get on. Right. Like I, you know, I want to grind for maybe a better mind bender, so I want to mm-hmm. grind for better spare rations. And right. that's the content that's in the game. Right. Um, so it I almost want them to do something like what Yu-Gi-Oh does, where rather than doing a full set rotation, they just ban certain guns or armor mm. from specific activities. Mm. Uh, I don't know if that's possible based on mm. their. Um, well, they, their, they their have engine. a. They have a. Um, in your defense, they have a. When an exotic armor is broken, we immediately they get the grade off, out. Yeah. They disable you, it. They can yeah. shut it out. So it, yeah. it, I mean, again, in practice, it seems as if they. Have, I don't know from a development standpoint, they can do that with each individual, you know, legendary and stuff like that. But we have examples like when Fell Winter was busted, boom, shut down. You know, I'm waiting for Antius Wards. Thank you. Continue yeah. though. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I'm getting to the end of it, but like mm-hmm. it. I, I think I'm in the super minority when I say this, but that, that's that's just I I want them to do something more like that, and I think Call of Duty mm-hmm. did something similar in uh, a couple games ago. I don't really follow Call of Duty, where they essentially in certain game modes the players in the lobby could like vote to ban a gun. Mm-hmm. But I, I like I would say like as a hypothetical example, let's say you know this weekend of trials, mm-hmm. um, hard light is banned. Right. You can't you can't put hard light on. Yeah, like you just can't launch you can't launch trials. You put it on and you can't. Uh, you can't put it on during it, and that way you get you get more like, uh, what, what's the word? It's more um, narrowed down data. Right. That you can they can understand rather than right. having the set rotation. I feel like the set rotation solution is basically their solution to saying this is how we're going to make you keep playing the game. Mm. And the super super cynical side of me is this is how you're going to keep pl- this is how we're going to make you keep playing the game in order to maybe make you spend money mm. on the Eververse store <laughs> and we're kind of fixing it so we got some goodwill back. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I've, been, I've been like very cynical this whole podcast, but I just want to okay. say like no, I, I, you gotta, I respect you gotta them a lot and you I understand where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. But it's also, I have to look at it that way because I'm on the outside right? and so or we're all on the outside. Like we don't, you know, we don't have mm-hmm. really that much inside knowledge and they don't right. explain things. So if, right. what I would pay to be on the inside. Yeah, like if, I was, if I was just a fly on the wall, oh, just, I, I just want to understand so many aspects of this game, and and mm-hmm. it sucks that Guardian Cause are happening this year because I, I was know, really, bro, really looking forward. All, to it. I know, yeah, we talking to the yeah. devs, like, yep. dude, I know, I know. That's the part I missed the most. You're still but I, the, 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 the analytical discussion. No, no, that was that was it. I I just wanted to wrap it up because I was very long winded for a. Uh, ha- kind of half big no, explanation. No, 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 you were good. They were calling you Dr. Drew and Destiny. I was loving it. <laughs> <laughs> I was loving it, man. L- listen, man, you, 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 you hear some major, some points here, you know, um, it is, it is very interesting to me, you know, um, the thought process behind the balancing, um, it is it very interesting to see, um, I, I think, they, I, don't, they have, I don't envy them. Like, I understand yeah, I it's a, it's, it's a hard It is problem, a very man. difficult process. It's a very, because on one hand, I do understand your points and it could, those things could solve a lot, you know, because a lot of these things, if you look at other games and the relationship with Destiny and you apply them here, some of that stuff could apply. I think also it's like, there's a bunch of hats here. There's like the marketing hat. How do we sell this product? How do we get them excited? You know, whatever, whatever. Then you got the balancing hat, you know what I'm saying? Which is like, okay, how do we make this where it's fair and, and, and things, you know, compete and stuff like that. And, and, and then it's also like 
the investment hat now I, I feel the investment hat is that is super threatened right now and that is going it's going to be polarizing man because there's guys like you and there's guys that i know that are also hardcore lovers of this game and i get hit with the same thing like cog all they do is taking stuff away and then bring it back and then taking it like it, it, it's it's trying to justify certain decisions are getting harder and harder. And again, like he said, I don't, I, mean, I don't want to make this seem like, oh, this is so easy. All you got to do is, I, no, I, I'm never going to disrespect him in that way. But um, yeah, man, it, it, is, it is one of those things where community feedback, I feel is getting better. I also feel though, to, to E's point, we're still in this super vague, area of still not knowing we've been this game for so long it is unacceptable to me that we still don't know how exactly you know accuracy works or certain specific perks work. why the secrecy behind the curtain on this we've been with you guys this long why, why do you think this knowledge is not worth disseminating or like do do you or is it like you disrespect the the intelligence of the game i don't understand the thought process to not explain in painful detail whether it be through visual representation or something you need to get people to understand first what it is you're doing what these perks mean then why you're doing what you're doing it, it's a combination you can't just give me one or the other and then us as the community we're trying to figure this out like you've got to still I, again we, we take two step forwards one step back you, you you do certain things with transparency that i love and the luke smith director's cuts i love i do you know it's just that we've got to still let the curtain back a little bit more and explain but e, where, where you at with this man i feel i'm talking now like for a little oh, bit let everybody have their pieces on mm -hmm. it so mm -hmm. I, I've listened to as many different thoughts on this as I can mm -hmm. um, between the anti-sunsetting, those that are in favor of it, those are that are in fear of what could mm -hmm. go wrong. Those are just like, it's got to happen. Some that are like, mm -hmm. if executed correctly, it's like, you know, picture six months after the fall expansion, when all this stuff comes out, it's either going to be looked at and be like, hey, they nailed it or holy yeah. crap, that was a train wreck. It does. Some right. people are like, it's going to be one of those. Uh, some people mm -hmm. are like, where's the middle ground for this one? And it seems like there's not a lot of that. Um, mine's a weird point of like, be it magic, be at? it world of Warcraft, be it any of those references of mm -hmm. things not being available forever. Right. We had three years of destiny one, potentially that was going to be three years of destiny two before destiny three came. So we are, we're in uncharted territory period. We don't, mm -hmm. they are trying to navigate a ship that for one, they're just potentially getting them feet, their feet under them at this point. After mm -hmm. they, you know, paid $160 million dollars to get away from Activision, um, mm -hmm. they bought their own IP to make sure they actually could do it. And then this mm -hmm. season feels like a football team's building season. That's the best way I can. It seems like they're trying to be like, okay, we got to look at the draft. We may not have that many wins. Come on, fans, stick with us. It's going to be a rough season. <laughs> is this the, um, this the four and twelve? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is this is your this is your Detroit Lions four and twelve. This is yeah. We're we going for the number one pick for September. You know, we're going for we the doing? picks. Okay. We're going to go. I got you. And I got you. I we slide back I, in the draft I, right now. I have hope this is fall expansion with things that are building. Like, the pyramid ships, one way or the other, are going to be involved. Now, I yes. have this weird little thing about the pyramid ship wall that I was thinking about recently. I was like, I'm wondering, depending on what comes next season, which may or may, may, or may not be related to the quest that you haven't seen yet, if it's not related to that, still I'm wondering, like, I wonder if the, where the pyramid ship's in game is. Because everybody keeps saying Titan. Because theoretically, by math, that's where they're going to end up yeah. at the end of the season. But theory, mm -hmm. what are they really going for? The big thing that brought him here in the first place, the Traveler. So if right. you look on the map wall, it's just about as far for another season for them mm -hmm. to go from the wall in. Now, the mm -hmm. bunkers are going to go away, which recently just kind of nixed that theory because we wouldn't actually be right. able to look in the bunkers. And I honestly really hate the bunkers are going away because they could leave the one on the moon tied to right. the quest and not actually delete the quest. But right. that's the whole FOMO thing that they have learned about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. I mean, when you take World of Warcraft and you get a new expansion, you go from level mm -hmm. 60, I've played, and that's the whole thing when it comes to, like, respecting players' investment. You go through the 40-person raid, you do this stuff. You're going for the top level. You have spent all of this time getting the top level gear. You have a while to enjoy it. It could be, like, two years for an expansion, and they have, like, patches and other stuff that comes, and things do get, you know, left behind, basically. But mm -hmm. as you have also said before, it's like there is a true, in this game, they nailed the 
literal psychological attachment to a weapon. It's different mm, of shooting yes. a scathe lock, yes. a duke, a my go Thank figure, you, your bygones, whatever it is, versus Ooh, acts with stats and numbers on it that my little character, you know, sprite mm -hmm. is going to walk around with. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. But on the other side, there is a point of I'm used to working insanely hard for this one thing, and then new expansion comes out, and there's a lot of new stuff. But mm -hmm. that's this is where my honestly it like worry is starting to arise oh. with no it's just it's it's what they can He's deliver worried. no it's just the, it's how it's delivered and i think that's really? where a lot of people are landing is how does it land and this one this specifically this twab actually made me a little more hesitant than some of the other ones because you take mm. uh the perks you take things mm -hmm. like hey reload speed some people mm -hmm. are like why do you have to knock it down versus bring some other things just up to match it more powerfully Mm -hmm. You talk about power creep to a point, but I mean, a lot of people right now have said Outlaw doesn't feel overbearing. Like, out the reload, right. yeah, you want those, but again, like, mm -hmm. Recluse is too much, right. but also, you know, Sneak Bow sucks. <laughs> so, I mean, it's true, but somewhere it's like, would I rather have the Sneak Bows come up? Like, if you're crouching, right. your reload speed is twice as fast. Be like, dude, if you can actually crouch, you can go pew, pew, pew. Like, if they yeah. bring some stuff up to be more powerful, but not right. to a point of being broken... And I right. guess if there's trying to still bring things down, my mm -hmm. worry at this point is how exciting are the perks going to be in the future? Right. Yes. How creative can they get if, like, they have reload listed in one, two, three, four, five, six different ways that they're even adjusting mm -hmm. here, and all of these reload perks are potentially going to be brought down. More mm -hmm. things are being brought down. We've got dynamic sway reduction, which is the only thing that actually sounds positive. Pulse yeah, monitors, like... Pulse monitor is situational, but general use dynamics, like, the only one that's like, yeah, that actually yeah. has potential yeah, to bring it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many more, honestly, I'm wondering, like, are there going to be new archetypes? We got the waveframe grenade launcher, for example. Right. Marty's Martyr's Retribution. Retribution. That was a new thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I like that. That was cool. Uh, I mean, honestly, at some point, I would like to see that if it takes them making new weapon styles. What if there's an arc version of that? You shoot right. out this little thing, and it's like a little storm grenade. There's a void one. Yeah. Somebody was like, hey, you shoot out like the, like a black hole effect for void. And mm. some of those could be like just unique weapons for them to add into. But again, when it comes to the perks, if we're going to be right. getting new weapons, mm -hmm. and same thing for like world. If you get new stuff, it's got to feel fresh in a different way. Like the, right. this expansion has felt the emptiest in changes. of it. We got the moon. No, this whole Shadow Keep expansion. We didn't get mm -hmm. major new perks. Like literally the waveframe grenade launcher for the past year is the probably the most unique thing that we've seen. No, but I think in their defense, well, didn't they get did we get Vorpal and Fire and no Fireland there, did exist. The, there were there were quite a few new perks added last season. Uh, mm -hmm. some of the some of the, like clown cartridge existed in Destiny One. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um they so that, was, that was yeah, that was replaceable. But we did we did mm -hmm. get a fair amount of new perks. Um I, I would say about the same amount that we got in uh, Season of the Drifter, which mm -hmm. was the first time they introduced new perks since Forsaken, I think, at that yeah. point. Um, mm -hmm. But to, to your point, which I, I think I touched on, this is my biggest fear is that I'm afraid that they like sunsetting in theory will work, but if they mm -hmm. don't reintroduce perks or functions mm -hmm. that are equivalent or better in some way that incentivize me to keep playing the yeah. game, yeah. then I'll, then it's it, it's the Thanos paradox problem yes. that I mentioned on the last time. Like yeah, yeah. I already knew what existed, and you took mm -hmm. it away from me, and now I have to get it again. Which that's where I have the problem. If you reskin it, that doesn't fix the issue. Like it has to be something better, right. uh, and then you can take it away from me because then I understand. Oh, I'm gonna get something better in the future. Right. Um, but to just take it away from me and give me a recluse 2.0 that has it's effectively the same thing, right. that that doesn't cut it for me. Like, and Definitely. we have to see it. Like, yeah, you know, we have to see. It. I, I you know. I, I'm being a little hard on them, but mm -hmm. no. They, uh, hey, they just don't hey. communicate this stuff. Like, yeah. it's so frustrating. Yeah. I was like, I mean, and that's the thing for me is, like, the worry is they reissue something that I've already got. And, you know, when you say, like, the Yu-Gi-Oh! ban list, if I have an old spare rations and that comes back into being an available weapon, I can yoink it out of the vault and I can use it again, as opposed to mm. we've a reissued spare rations, and this is what one of the... It was, I think, Destiny Firing Range. They were talking about, I don't want to take have to look at a god roll in my vault that I'm just like, I've held on to this thing. It's like, amazing, cool. I don't want to see Spare Rations 2.0. Yeah, have that same. And have to go through it again. So the reissues right. is one side, but honestly, and this is where this is just where it's on, on Bungie. 
We've played a lot. We've gone through a lot of different things. And my hope that the fall expansion is huge. Like, because right. I feel at this point it has to be. Shadowkeep was five missions, and yes, we got the moon, but like it didn't touch the Forsaken or the Taken Kings. It no. wasn't there. Um, yeah. It was the, good though. It was good. It was good, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't Forsaken level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was like. I mean, it was like, it was like Rise of Iron. Yeah. It yeah. was. It, it, it was your, Rise of Iron ish. Yeah. Yeah. It was your mm -hmm. Rise of Iron, and at this point, since there doesn't seem to be a Destiny three on the horizon, we still right. need that Taken King or Forsaken moment. Right. Whether it be you know the reintroduction of the Forsaken subclasses and the mm -hmm. arm the weapons with random rolls. We need some substantial change because right now, if it's just like two perks, a reload and a scope, if it's these two perks, and if they do give more of just two perks, I am just mm -hmm. worried as they're, as they're trying to keep things so tight right now, mm -hmm. that like, if they do introduce something, will it be, will it live too strong for too long and then go away? Or just, right. I'm worried that a lot of the stuff that we get introduced outside of like, mm -hmm. maybe the pursuit weapon or something of that nature, are not mm -hmm. going to be enough. Right. It's not going to be strong enough, not going to be standout enough for the stuff that's being sunset, as you guys have all been saying. So mm -hmm. it's on Bungie for me at this point to prove me wrong because yeah. in like I don't want to keep having Whisper even in the game, but it's like I don't want to keep having these things keep coming forward. Like At some point, right. I do want to go after new stuff. I'm, right. I'm of that opinion. I just want to make sure the new stuff is something I desire. That's my one major worry. And seeing the stuff right. of them slowly inching these perks down and closer and but not anything mm -hmm. getting much more powerful as you said we've right. been at our weakest point for a little while now right. if we keep feeling weaker and weaker my brother said it too he's like mm -hmm. my hammerhead my Jotun, my blast mm -hmm. furnace are all going away Jotun's gonna stay but the other two hammerhead and blast mm -hmm. furnace i love the way they sound i love the way i feel and everything they feel like they're getting weaker and the enemies right. seem to be keep getting stronger and he's like mm -hmm. i feel like i can't do I feel like I'm not that strong in the game and I never get to feel that strong. And I'm right. worried with what's introduced in the future. I don't know if we're going to get that feeling like, you know, Guardians actually right. come back. So I know it's right. a long-winded way to get there for everybody, so I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Apparently this no. has been the long-winded discussion all night long for everybody. But no, no, no. This is just good. mine has been this reading this one and thinking about this one. I still want the sun setting, but like mm. I am very... I wonder if they're going to mm -hmm. be able to deliver stuff that's truly as desirable as I would like in my head. No, I get it. I mean, both of you guys have made fantastic points. And, and that is, you know, the trust we have to have in them, right? At this point, that's just where we are. We we are literally hoping that, you know, what is it, that old Spider-Man expression with great power come great responsibility. If you want to take away this stuff, you know, we're trusting you to do the right things to make sure that these new things that are introduced are super desirable because I'm of the mindset of Teddy in this respect. I'm going to first chase after things that are the most efficient, right? That's me. If people, if the, the numbers break down and uh, this new weapon is desirable because you can do either DPI or whatever, right? That's number one. The second reason for me is, you know, I do like the power fantasy and I do like just cool things, right? You want things to be cool. You want things to be exciting. Like when the, that wave, whatever, breach, great launch of the Marty's was introduced, that was new, that was fresh. I hadn't seen anything like that, you know? So it's on them to have this 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 pool in, reintroduced, you know, and stuff like that. Now, where I'm also worried, yeah, it's like, if you're going to tell me in my vault, I have like right now, basically how, the way I play is... Even there's archetypes that I know in the game that are terrible right now. Scout right? rifles, rocket launchers. It, not bolts. mentioned at all, by the way. I did want to say that. Not mentioned at all, but we're going to that. But, you know, scout, like, I, when I get a god roll drop of those, I immediately put it into the vault. Because my feeling is the hope of that sandbox change that buffs those archetypes, right? I do so, the same thing. Yeah, like I'm like okay, I don't use this. Well, this I'm is a terrible archetype. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you know, man, I got this. You know, breach right here that's got a god roll. I got this one. You know, this one forty, this one ten hand cannon that's god roll. If if they ever come back, you know what I'm saying? Like boom. So now, with the sun setting, those are gonna go. <laughs> so I done held on to that, and the hope you know what I'm saying is that. When these the new things get you know reintroduced, I mean, not, I mean, when new things that get uh, come out, you know, we're gonna get stuff just as good. And again, the issue I also have is the re again the, the reissue, man, because it, it, it's not a good feel. Like I said, if you had it, 
you take it away and then you bring it right back without the emotional attachment, without the skin, without the, uh, and then here's one point no one's talking about. When they introduced, when you get a weapon and you got that little slider and it says, track your PVP kills, track your PVE kills. What's the point now? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, for your Let's master working, yeah. The, the thought process then is we want you to have an emotional attachment to this. And we want this to feel like it's yours. These are Bungie's words, right? Re, it, this whole thought process completely contradicts that, right? They, 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 they're they're going to be finite number of kills before we're going to have to get rid of it. So, again... So I've, got, uh, yeah, I've yeah. got a couple points to that. So first Let's off, go. I just recently hit, like about a month or two ago, 100,000 kills on Recluse in PvE. Wow. And again, I, I understand that I'm in the super minority when I yeah. say this, but I, to me, I don't need interesting guns to, put, to play the game. I just need mm -hmm. the most optimal thing for the thing I'm doing, and I'm totally satisfied with that. So mm -hmm. at the moment, it's typically Mountaintop Recluse Anarchy is usually the loadout mm -hmm. for PvE, uh, which is ironic because that was the loadout before Sniper Rifles got buffed. <laughs> right. uh, and then they got buffed, and we're like, oh, Izanagi's Burden is not the best thing. And then they got unnerfed, and it's like, well, they didn't mm -hmm. nerf these, so I guess this is fine now. Yeah. Um, so it, I understand why Recluse has to go, but it also yeah. really sucks because I have 100,000 kills on that gun. Fair so like... Fair What's the point now? To me, it's just like, well, I might as well just delete this. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. I had an attachment to it. I'm not going to, but like... Now, Teddy, what if they reintroduce your recluse two seasons? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm going to get it, but I'm going to be pissed because it's going to yeah. be like, why did you do this? Uh, my second follow-up point was, so yeah, yeah. you said that, Cardino, you, know, you said that you hoard weapons like I do. Like, yeah. if I get a god roll of anything, I generally keep it, even if the weapon is absolute trash yes. because there's always this chance, and, the, and I've been doing this since Destiny 1, mm -hmm. there's always this chance that that gun could get buffed in the future, or that art mm -hmm. could get buffed in the future, and then I'm sitting on a, a, a gold nugget, basically. Yes. Like, like, that gun might not even be earnable at this point in the game. Yep. And I don't know if that's happened to either of you, but when it's happened to me, that's like one of the greatest feelings. It's the best feeling. My spare yeah, Russians bro. was exactly that. I was like, we did Reckoning. Yeah. I went through and I was like, ah, I need one of those. And then somebody's mm -hmm. like later, hey, this thing's apparently really hot right now. This is the role you're looking for. And I posted it in Twitter and they're like, I have this one. Is this? And they're like, that's the God role. Leave me the hell alone. And I was just bro. like, and it was just sitting there. And it's bro. like, okay. So yep. the other side yep. of this, do you have any other points? Yeah, I, had, I, had, I, had, I had one more. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of related. So, they, if you've noticed, Deej and the other PR managers don't mm -hmm. say this anymore, but they used to say, mm -hmm. it's always a conversation. It's always yes. a back and forth. Yes. But Bungie's never actually done that. If you really mm -hmm. think about how they've communicated stuff to us in this game, the entire mm -hmm. lifespan of Destiny, even before Destiny came out, mm -hmm. all they do is tell us something, mm -hmm. we react to it, negative or positive, and with the exception of a few instances, such as the mm -hmm. artifact, right. uh, yes, they, yeah. generally, they generally don't change yeah, what they told us yes. they just tell us what they're doing and then we have to accept it the way it is good or yes. bad yes. that sucks in my <laughs> opinion like that is such a like i'm sorry but that is like such a backwards way of doing it the way you mm. should be doing it like mm -hmm. other developers like dice or 343 mm. is hey we're thinking about changing swords yes what do you Preach. think about these potential changes and Preach. then the community goes well, I speed run with this sword, and that would ruin the experience of speed running, which has become a kind of a close knit but large community of Destiny. Mm -hmm. In fact, the recent S uh, the re recent uh, GDQ featured mm -hmm. the Last Witch speed run, which mm -hmm. had been the first time Destiny showed up. Like wow. that was super cool to watch. Wow! But you can't do that anymore because they mm -hmm. nerfed World Line Zero, that like 0.1 percent of all players were using to speed mm -hmm. run the game. Mm -hmm. for no reason like nobody yeah. asked for that nobody wanted that it wasn't necessarily breaking the game like yes mm -hmm. you could get out of bounds mm -hmm. but it didn't like help you in any way for anything mm -hmm. that was major right. and so stuff like that like when they announced the sword changes i was like cool they're gonna change swords cool. and then immediately it was like why wouldn't you tell me this six months ago when you were thinking about this so that i could like or the community in general could be right. like yeah. that's good or bad and mm -hmm. it's and they're to their credit they are talking about sunsetting I guess early since mm -hmm. it's going to happen in September, but mm -hmm. I don't think anything will change based on our feedback. Like I, I and if it does, we'll never know because they'll right. never tell us that, which right. is super frustrating. Like that's so that like irks me so much <clears throat> internally because it's it's just like like no offense to them, but it's like mm -hmm. bad PR in a way, like bad mm -hmm. PR management. It's like mm -hmm. just explain to me because eh, the same thing with the perk stuff, like. Just go to the dev that made the perk or handles that perk and right. tell them write a one paragraph explanation of how moving target works. Right. Cool. Mm -hmm. Now I have a reference for the next five years on how moving mm -hmm. target works and I don't mm -hmm. have to like 
go to the podcast of John Wise Newski explaining <laughs> and Destiny One for whatever the, so that's, that's, yeah. that's that's the one they always reference from Crucible Radio. Yeah. It's the only time that range was ever explained. Whatever and They have to reference that, yeah. and it's like that's crazy to me that that was Bro, the only time that was explained. They're, 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 I'm gonna keep it real. Like there's still perks I truly don't understand the, the entire nature of them. You know what I'm saying? There's still there's still perks that I I, I don't yeah. know. And to your last point, I get back to you. I know you was gonna talk. It is is you said a point like I said. I know I'm in the maybe one percent, but it's such a feeling, like you said earlier. When again, you you stash that non used archetype, and for me, you know what it really hit. It was um when when six hundreds got buffed, and I pulled out like a god rolled Gilead from Black Armory, and I'm like, oh, I'm ready, baby. Like you know what I'm saying? It, it rewarded me because yep. I I recognized it, and I so with this thing, you know, I, again. Am I going to adjust and move forward? Absolutely. But it, it, it does hurt that aspect, you know what I'm saying, of, of holding on to stuff. And then with the hope that if the sandbox changes, you'll be able to utilize these things. It's almost like a reward for your for your diligence and for your, you know what I'm saying, for your time it's, investment. It's a <laughs> loot game. Like, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, I sh- I'm going to keep this brief, but like, I honestly feel like they do not respect the player's time, despite saying that a lot. And that's actually uh, leading in. That was leading in actually. Be careful my now. Point. I, I, I don't think they do. Like, so no, like that's that's fair. one of the biggest mm-hmm. things for a counter to people not liking weapon sunsetting. So you take something like Mindbenders, which is the perfect example. Mm-hmm. It's in a nightfall. The drop rate's really low. Then you have to try and get mm-hmm. the right roll, and it's a pain in the ass strike. And the dude hasn't like. There's so many things wrong with the Mindbenders grind. That is one of those where they're like, Fallout talked about it forever that he didn't have a mind benders for the longest time. He says he's got one, I think now, but like mm-hmm. how many times or the people who go and play Reckoning, like I forget which one said it. And they're like, I start my stream with that every day working on certain mm-hmm. grinds. And they're like, mm-hmm. I'm trying to get this thing. So the argument mm-hmm. there and it might've been Cami Cakes. Uh, I'm trying to mm-hmm. reference all the right people so I don't steal anybody's yeah. thoughts. Um, mm-hmm. But the idea behind that is, is like, okay, so. If you're going to make things have a window of aspirational usability, then Mm -hmm. the grind for those needs to be a lot more like player driven and you have choice over what you're going for. If I do a flawless raid, exotic from the raid. Like Mm -hmm. if I do the hardest difficulty, take something like Menagerie, which is still Mm -hmm. the pinnacle of all activities just because that was so amazing. But take Mm -hmm. the chalice. And I was honestly wondering if you could take that a step further. Okay, Mm -hmm. so if you do normal Menagerie, you might be able to narrow it down to the auto rifle. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if you do heroic menagerie, then maybe you can narrow it down to the range masterwork or the archetype that you go for. And like the harder mm. difficulty you do with something. Mm. So the people the more who you have, can... yep. The more you can like narrow no. it down in what you're mm-hmm. grinding for. So then the casual okay. player is like, Hey, I can go get this auto rifle. Cool. I got one. Nice. They mm-hmm. don't may not have as many people to go for, but again, they're also not Hardcore. trying to be the ultra efficient Teddy, who's doing that, but he's like, hey, if Mm -hmm. Teddy's like, hey, I got like five people, we're going to go into Menagerie, we're going to crush this thing, no one's going to die, I can, if if you get flawless, you can put in a fifth gym, and you can get Mm -hmm. like almost the exact perfect roll you're going for, and you can go like deep, deep, deep on that like driven Mm -hmm. dive, just because your skill gets you there, and guess what, to get to that flawless run, you've probably run that thing 20 times in the first place between deaths and other things. So you've already Mm -hmm. grinded some in the first place. And then Mm -hmm. when you finally do get, it's like the carrot at the end of the tunnel or a carrot at the end of it. But you know, Mm -hmm. if I can get good enough, if my skill can get there, then I know I can achieve what I'm going for. And that was the thing when it comes to World of Warcraft, there's a bow for a Mm -hmm. hunter. And I literally Mm -hmm. would log on to, I log on to four other people's accounts to get this bow for them. Mm -hmm. Because the quest you had to go through I don't know if you know what the word kiting means, do you? If I say that, I do. Yeah, you do. You don't. don't. So I mean, basically, what I it means? Yeah, basically, what it means is I'm like I'm constantly running away from. I'm basically dragging somebody like a kite behind me, but I'm always okay. making sure I'm keeping myself Keep at it. distance. And okay. the way you had to get this bow is you had to do it four times. And hell no, mm-hmm. the emblem wasn't enough um, <laughs> for pit of heresy. Just like solo flawless pit of heresy. That's mm-hmm. another one. Like you go solo Ooh. flawless pit of heresy. Woo. I get an emblem. I get an emblem. I'm like, you're Woo. telling me I can't get like a piece of Showcase. armor that drops with like twelve armor and I look like you know, yes. the I look like Zolnik. Like dog. that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. But the idea of kiting is like I had it was hard enough that most people are like, I even got the first part of the quest, but I can't go finish this quest. And I'm like, all right, so I went through, I figured out how to do it and I ended up helping other people, but you had to kite four people through like half of a World of Warcraft zone. 
which is huge. And you mm -hmm. had to do it in four different places around the world. That was a mm -hmm. really hard thing to go for. But as I finally figured it out, and I spent hours on that stupid quest, I got it. Right. That was one of the best bows at the time, and I could achieve it if I was skilled enough to do it. Same principle there is like if there is seasonal act heroic insert seasonal activity, if there is a hard version of that in season 12 when this sunsetting mm -hmm. happens, if I can go after that, then at least I know I can get that reward. So right. the biggest thing people want is the player choice to say, hey, if the mind benders is there and I want mm -hmm. a good roll, how do I get the curated? Well, you can run the nightfall flawlessly. Right. Crap, that's going to be hard. But if I do it, I know I can get the but curated it, opening shot mind it. benders. Exactly. And th there, is, there is a, mm -hmm. a limit to how far that RNG can screw you. So that's one of those things when they were talking about the biggest piece of them spending four months or logging in on reckoning every single day on their stream and not mm -hmm. getting what they're going for. It makes the sun setting feel worse because it shortens yeah. the timetable they can use it by Absolutely. however long it takes the grind. If mm -hmm. when it releases like, dude, we're ultra skilled. We knocked it out. Cool. I can enjoy it for 11 months and two weeks because I got it in the first mm -hmm. two weeks of the new season. Then right. they know it's like, hey, I've got this cool done and they're going to keep stuff going. So it's the the way people go after content in the fall is going to be another mm -hmm. determination. For one, it's got to be desirable, and two, mm -hmm. the player choice of how they go after it, not just right. flipping a coin. And right. again, this is why me reading this twab of the world loot pool seems bigger mm -hmm. and a little more varied as opposed to just the Gambit guns or whatever it is. Like, yeah. It just gave me weird feelings on this one, so I'm... Yeah. Yeah. I do want the sun setting, but man, they have to deliver, so sorry for They've it. Again. It's a no, long podcast, no, guys. No, this, this is fire. Is this is fire. The last point is, you know, and it, 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 you, you're nailing a lot of things. E. And, and the thing is, we got it. We got to call it how it is. It's also time. Remember, I, I, I preached this during my, you know, initial pushback with um, it, with uh, retirement was just time investment, man. You've got to respect players' time. You know what I mean? You you have to. And let's be real, right? When time investment is not respected. It leads to, you know, disgust and it leads to people exiting the game. We, you know, two of three here <laughs> have not played for a certain reason. We consider ourselves hardcore, you know what I'm saying? For 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 that lack for that reason. So it's up to them. You know what I'm saying? They 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 have to knock this out the park. They have to nail it. Because ultimately what what will happen, you know, shout out to Gadal and shout out to a lot of people is people say, Hey, you know, I'm not feeling respected. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's just it. That's just how it works. You know what I'm saying? And it's sad, but they've got, they've have to nailed it because you can't do this to people. It, it, it's like cyclical abuse. You cannot continue to do this to people and expect, hey, baby, take me back. Hey, baby, take me back. And it's a no, at the point people are going to say no, but you know what I'm saying? And, and that's, again, I don't, I don't want to disrespect them. I don't envy their position. It's none of this stuff is easy and flip switch. I I I don't want to make it seem that way, but they the onus is on them to really, really knock this out. You know what I'm saying? Because again, if you do, it's proven. We come back. We're excited. We we like the the new direction. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So it, it's a tough thing because and shout out to Prescott. He made a good point. The other thing too, what I will admit, because again, we're the community. We don't know everything. There's some there's some things that in our minds we may think is the right way to go. You know what I'm saying? And for their for their thought process, because they have the data that they're not telling us, or they have, you know what I'm saying? They may have legitimate reasons, right? As to why certain things can't happen and so on and so forth. But because of the lack of transparency behind the curtain, we don't know, which leads us to speculate to think that they don't know what they do. <laughs> so again, help us help you. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like you know, what you're gonna say, like, hey, hey, somebody mentioned in the chat, community summit, you know, these are the things, ha help, have us feel like we're having that dialogue, like Teddy said, as opposed to daddy said no, daddy said no, and, you know what I'm saying? Oh, and, you know, Deej said no. Yeah, Deej said no, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, you know, we, we, you got Who is to- your you daddy got, and what does he do? <laughs> they got to do a better job, man. We, we all pulling for this thing, but, uh, We'll see, man. We'll see. We'll I, see. It. So yeah, in Destiny One, uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot of points I want to make, and I'm trying to like keep up with everything. You guys, yeah, you, guys, yeah. you guys said some pretty good stuff. So mm -hmm. in Destiny One, there's this problem of I don't like using this phrase, but this is what was happening: mm -hmm. the rich got richer, mm -hmm. right? Whereas you, the more you played the game and the more hardcore you were at Destiny One, you got better and better stuff, and it was yes. very hard 
the barrier to entry was very high. And mm-hmm. I had I anecdotal agree. experience with this with two of my really good friends who uh, jumped out of the game shortly after Taken King came out. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they played for a bit, and they, they're they not the greatest gamers. Like, they mm-hmm. played very casually, but they yeah. enjoyed what they played. And they're, they're two big Borderlands fans, so they come from mm-hmm. Borderlands background. And they just wanted something new at the time, because Borderlands was kind of in a rut uh, mm-hmm. during that era. Right. And they kind of gave up on the game around the Taken... a little bit past the Taken Spring update, um, because it was just too confusing, and they ultimately couldn't end up. They, they weren't able to to continually pursue the hardcore activities right. to keep getting to the better up. loot, trials, mm-hmm. raids, you know, all that stuff that we're getting. And so here comes D two, which obviously was designed with the intention for casual yes. players and, and, to, and to broaden the scope. Mm-hmm. And I I feel like the current state of Destiny two is really, really suffering from that design mm-hmm. philosophy uh, mm-hmm. because they're so afraid to mm-hmm. give a good player. A reward for doing yes. something difficult and it's yes. so bizarre to me because yes. it, it ultimately especially with sunsetting it won't matter mm-hmm. right like right. like if i if i do the grandmaster nightfall and the grandmaster mm-hmm. nightfall if i do it in a certain amount of time with a certain mm-hmm. amount of score it, it. Gar- it guarantees me you know some really cool drop in strikes that currently don't exist because all the drops and strikes are just not good, mm-hmm. not good. uh i should get that drop and if mm-hmm. someone if uh, this is going to be hard to hear for some people, but if you're not capable of doing that, whether yes. you can't get the people to do it or you're not skilled enough, you don't deserve that. Like that's right. it's just that simple. Like Hello. if you're not good enough to go to the lighthouse, this is another mm-hmm. prime example. Sorry, you don't yeah. deserve the loot. Right. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't try. Right. You should have the mindset of trying to get better. I right. I can attest to this because at Destiny One, I was terrible at PvP, right. and the only reason I even, I didn't even touch PvP before Trials. Of, Cyrus mm-hmm. came out. Well, that was wow. cool. I played. I played Iron Banner once, wow. and I made the mistake of not getting uh, Felwinters during the Iron Banner because that was the busted Felwinters. Oh yeah, that, yeah. Uh, that was the only Shout reason. I, play, I was the only reason I played, and I didn't get it. And then mm-hmm. Trials of Osiris came out, and I was like, I want to get better at PvP because I'm really mm-hmm. bad at this game PvP. Mm-hmm. And by the end of Destiny One, I got a little bit better. And then Destiny Two rolled around, and there wasn't a lot to do during the first year of Destiny Two, so I played quite a bit of PvP. I played Trials, right. and I got better. Mm-hmm. I, I just kept getting better. I would not say I'm a good player. Mm-hmm. But I definitely, I, I don't necessarily, I didn't necessarily have the urge to get better, mm-hmm. but I wanted to get better because there was loot tied mm-hmm. behind doing these oh, things. Oh, there was an incentive. There was there was an incentive. There was a character the time the investment, the the difficulty yeah. investment. Oh, and so okay. again, mm-hmm. if if you aren't skilled enough to get the reward, I don't think you deserve it. And for whatever reason, in Destiny Two, I feel like Bungie is just so afraid to give that i feel like that's why trials flawless doesn't have anything special tied behind it because yeah. they're like if we put something special behind it people mm-hmm. are going to get super upset and they're not going to play our game newsflash people aren't playing trials with cyrus because a bunch of other things are wrong with yeah. it Ooh. so that doesn't even matter in, in like in the grand scheme of the picture point. They, they're going to fix yeah, it people are still pissed about the chest not yeah. like being valuable mm-hmm. yeah you get mm-hmm. like and exotics and you get it's same nightfall both like grandmaster nightfalls mm-hmm. and trials you get yeah. like materials that you would need to use to get there in the first place to be mm-hmm. as efficient as possible and mm-hmm. rolls on exotics, which we've already probably you're going in there with yeah. an exotic loadout in the first place. So you get nothing mm-hmm. of benefit mm-hmm. and the raids are the same way. Like garden of salvation, like perks, nothing has stood out on raid weapon perks since right. probably D one. I feel like facts. I mean, facts. Ramp, uh, like, mid- midnight coup and nation of beasts. I would say are the still. only two raid yeah. excluding exotics are the only two raid guns that have mattered at some yeah. point during destiny Two's lifespan. Nice. The rest of them, the rest of them could have been good or might have been good, but they mm-hmm. weren't like. I mean, you weren't going to put them on. Like, let's right. let's be honest. And, and oh man, that's you couldn't have said it any better because any better. Yeah, like I mean, you take the hard con, you take that really hard thing, and wow, I'm talking about. Hey, that's one of the best bows in the game. I had to work my ass off for it, but I did. Same thing. You do a raid. You do trials. Like me, like going to flawless trials seems like you I would have to be like I would have to start dedicating weekends and working for it and the progress would hopefully come but that's one of those I would have to work on improving on but even if you like have a decent group and can run into a raid and you get through most of the encounters right now mm-hmm. I think one of the reasons I haven't raided as much is because the incentive isn't there when you can still get a rampage when my go figure my dad bod rifle that I got Ax. a lot of crap for my, like I can that thing is so damn good. So good. The way so it good. feels for me, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. I, are there weapons? Uh, there's a Rampage Outlaw Pulse Rifle in Garden of Salvation. Mm-hmm. It might be right. the same, right? but not better. And that's one of the weird arguments for sunsetting is, like, these lateral upgrades. I'm like, I don't mm-hmm. want lateral upgrades anymore. I am tired right. of those. I don't I want don't another... Mean- one mm-hmm. of those. So I know you're get, it, yeah. you're itching to say something. So what do you got? I'm going to give it back to you, Teddy. I just want to say, because you, you nailed one point that I, I'm, I'm absolutely loving what you said, which is, again, we know how they started with D2 with the, I want to call it, 
the casualization. So yeah, to speak, I, hate, right? I hate using that word. I hate but to use that's, the word. That's just yeah. Yeah. That's just to yeah. say, right? Because in D one, like you said, the issue was when the hardcore, I guess, sort of called the rich got richer, right? They didn't, I guess, like that, and then maybe the casuals kind of veered away because they felt if they couldn't keep up, boom. But now sunsetting kind of alleviates that. So let's bring back that you know super reward that that incentive for the hardcore content to be better right because at the end of the day if they're so worried about that you're gonna sunset this stuff anyway you know what I'm saying? so i i think that's why it could it, it should swing back in that the pendulum in that direction for the pinnacle activity things like that but i'm gonna give it back to you because you was on fire you were about to say so something. the uh, mm-hmm. the final point i wanted to make and you kind of alluded mm-hmm. to this so so yeah it would be great Mm-hmm. when sunsetting happens for me you know, if, if I'm if I'm capable of doing the activity mm-hmm. to get the weapon but I'll present you with a scenario that I know will happen to me because my RNG is terrible what happens when six months into the year I finally get that gun from season 12 that I've been chasing and now oh, yeah. I only get to use it for six, for months, six months as opposed yeah. to 11 months yeah. right like think think about fell winters for example mm-hmm. fell winters came out at the very end of the season but mm-hmm. it's still tied to this season which means you don't get to use it through mm-hmm. The following season and the next year that takes place at the same time it right. only will be good up to that season right which means you don't actually get a year you get nine months to use right. it so it's kind of this like weird scenario and it, like think about the world loophole too i mm-hmm. still don't have a god rule last last hope i'm probably mm-hmm. never going to get a god rule last hope because the chances of me getting the drop first of all are astronomical and mm-hmm. then getting the two right perks on it are astronomical right. like it's just not going to happen so what happens when me as a hardcore player who will dedicate a crap ton of time to doing the activity that I want the thing from, but I don't get it, and then it goes away and I never got it. Mm-hmm. Like that that's where I'm really worried about. Because they 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 do this already kind of with triumphs and I mm-hmm. don't like that. Like it's yeah. just just leave it. I understand certain things can't be left in the game, but for the most part, just make triumphs that are capable of staying in the game and it's fine mm-hmm. uh, guns are a little bit different but mm-hmm. my greater point was like that scenario is going to happen not just to yeah. me it's going to happen to a lot of people Absolutely. and it's going to be terrible mm-hmm. we'd have to see it happen and unfortunately their iterative process just operates at that speed yeah. but it, it will happen and it'll be interesting to see how they handle that issue mm-hmm. I think that's where the reissuing of guns might come into play right. but what also irks me about that is mm-hmm. they mentioned that before Shadowkeep came out mm-hmm the artifact mods would be experimental mods. And some of them were, some of them weren't. Yeah. And they said that after the season, they would take a look at the mods and then reintroduce certain like, mods based that. on usage uh, back into the loop pool. They haven't done that at no, all. And the artifact all. has basically just been the same mods every single season with the exception of a few. And mm-hmm. then obviously the, the guns change depending on you know what we're supposed to use. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you apply that same logic and philosophy to the reissuing of guns... Does that just mean you're just not gonna reissue them because you've already failed to do it once? Right. Um, it. I don't know. It's. Mm-hmm. I'm very worried, but at the end of the day, I'm still gonna play the game and I'm yeah. still gonna, you know, hopefully enjoy it. But I. Mm-hmm. They they always had this monkey paw problem yeah. of like, the, there's always a catch, and that and that's the part they never tell us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we, like think about Armor 2.0. We talked about this when I was on the podcast last time. Yep. But like when we got to Armor 2.0, we were like, oh, this is super exciting. This is awesome. Yes. But then there but... was a catch. Yeah, you, it had to have a certain elemental affinity, and the mods Ugh. were tied to certain. And and then you had to get all this like perfectly rolled armor, and and mm-hmm. the, the game was like working against you to Station. not give you good rolls. Yep. And they just they do these weird things where it's like, mm-hmm. why? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay if Glad beats your strike in five yes. minutes. Yeah, it's fine. Like mm-hmm. that. Ironically, him beating it in five minutes is mm-hmm. watchable. Mm-hmm. Instead of me going through it with three people in forty minutes, that's mm-hmm. not watchable because I'm sitting in a corner trying not to die from the overpowered right. champion right. because I'm forced to use a really bad gun. Yep. That's not watchable. Sidearms, my God. Yeah, sidearms, um, submachine him, guns for barrier. Yeah, you know, X X streamers doing it solo in under ten minutes. Is way more interesting, which yeah, is so the ironic. Bungie does it. They don't like yeah. it. They and don't that, like it. Their key words in, in a twat was they don't like the idea of us melting stuff. So uh, I mean, it's it's, it's just such a weird. People are always to have. going to be able to do that to a point. Mm-hmm. And again, this is one of the things that killed Division or Division One early on. They tailored mm-hmm. to the streamers. It was the yep. crafting material that was like 
the a lot of the streamers who'd played a lot, they had a whole lot of that material, so they were able to craft and work on towards these god rolls. But then you have like 95% of the population who doesn't live in it. Like most of us who are probably listening to this anyway are more on the hardcore side as opposed to the other eight, you know, 500,000 people who might play this game. Mm -hmm. And then you have the majority of them that are just like, hey, I'm happy I got something. And then there's another person who blows away. There are speed runs for Mario 64 because people can backflip crap through walls and stuff like that and that's just like Mm -hmm. they have figured out the ways to beat the game and at some point you're not going to be able to nail down every single thing that pops up to a point and they do it's like they want to control that to a very very weird level and it's Mm -hmm. just as like it's I nailed it with the control I I really I really feel bad for the speedrunning community in Destiny because so in Destiny 1 I I sort of casually speedrun or speedran strikes Mm -hmm. Um, and and there was there was a fun aspect to it especially because I feel like the modifiers in Destiny 1 for the most part were better they were so much better Uh, where are those? Oh. Yeah, I don't know, man. There's so many things in Destiny One that we still don't have in Destiny Two, and it's Year Facts. Four of Destiny Two. Yeah. Like, uh, but that's a whole other problem. Uh, <laughs> that's a three-hour like podcast I, I, for another day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I would, I would speedrun strikes in Destiny One, and I enjoyed it. And in Destiny Two, we would occasionally do that. Like when when Warner of Nothing came up the first time, and we got the double drops. Mm-hmm. We actually oh, had, we actually, we actually how had good fun. Did that feel? We how had fun good did that feel? It. Oh it my great. god. We had so much fun speedrunning that, like, our, our first run was 30 minutes, and then we got mm-hmm. it down to 25 minutes, and then we and then we kind of changed the loadouts, and we got it sub 20, and then we're like, all right, could we do sub 15? And mm-hmm. you know, we looked up we looked up streamers or whoever yeah. speedrunners, and they were doing it like 12 or 13 minutes, or maybe even sub 10. I don't know, mm-hmm. whatever, mm-hmm. right? And we weren't aiming for that. It was just like yeah. a personal goal of like, how fast can we do this? Because at the end of the day, it's about efficiency, right? Like, I yes. want to get the max amount of drops in the max amount of time, or the least mm-hmm. amount of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there was something fun about that. Like I, mm-hmm. I had a really good time. It wasn't even the drops. Like yeah, mm-hmm. having having, you know, ascendant shards and all my characters postmasters and in my inventory capped out. That's great and all and mm-hmm. prisms too. But at the end of the day, like there was, I was having fun doing challenging content. Right. Shocking. Like <laughs> it, 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 it's 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 such a mind boggling concept, I guess. And then they they immediately had to go and patch it. Well, I guess it's not technically patched. I think it still works. Yeah. Um, but it just. I, I don't like I feel really bad when they nerfed Worldline Zero because it was yeah. such a small number of players that were yeah. they were I'll use the word exploiting because it is mm-hmm. technically a glitch but like yeah. it wasn't doing like and, and from a speedrunning standpoint from mm-hmm. or a community standpoint Destiny you can never go back to an older version of Destiny like you can't uninstall the patch and boot right, up and go Destiny. back to how it used to yeah. be yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's always you always have to play in the moment which basically mm-hmm. means that all the speedruns from that patch are just nothing like they don't matter they're, anymore they're just mm-hmm. cemented and yeah. yeah yeah and that and that's super unfortunate um yeah uh, again this is i'm kind of going on a tangent but like it mm-hmm. it goes back to that like control aspect of the game like I, mm-hmm. I almost feel like they they're like the proctor on the playground that's mm-hmm. trying to keep all the kids safe in the sandbox <laughs> but ultimately you just got to let the kids out of the sandbox like it's, <laughs> it's okay like the kids are going to grow up it's fine uh, I love but this. It's, it's funny. I'm very frustrated. Like if you can't tell, it's just bro, I, 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 I hear it in like your I, voice, brother. Like I'm very I hear passionate it. about this, but it's yeah. so it's so annoying when you know we're entering year six of this game, and it's yeah. uh, or year I guess year seven, seven, yeah. uh, seven, yeah. um, and uh, come yeah. on, like bro, bro. just that, that's that's the only reason why I worry recently. Yeah. That's the only reason. It it it, it, it it's, again. There's only a certain amount of time, bef- you know, people will continue to deal with things they don't like. And, 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 and again, it, it seems cyclical. We understand it's a live service game thing. There's going to be peaks. There's going to be values. I understand that. You know, it's just, you know, I do worry about them sometimes, you know, on their own. You know what I'm now, let's, you know, we got to talk about it. You know, and, and and seeing them be able to recover and, and get this thing right. So, you know, again, onus is on them, you know, to, 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 to take all this uh, feedback, to implement it in a correct way, to, to, to respect time investment, to respect rewards for pinnacle content. You know, the onus is on them because my biggest fear, E, is now that we've kind of assuming that there's not going to be D3 in the immediate future yeah um yeah it, it's gonna be you've got to wow people every time when you that's, come back now. i mean that's why i said like the wow expansions like you introduce like 
vastly mm-hmm. new things and systems. Right. And that's why I was like, the Taken Kings and the Forsakens mm-hmm. upended many systems in the game, built new right. things. Like, they, mm-hmm. the questification, terrible word, but the questification mm-hmm. of destiny in Taken yeah. King is what, what everybody loved. Hey, these things have like six steps. I gotta go here, here, here. There's a lot of crap to do. Mm-hmm. That's what people wanted. Mm-hmm. Forsaken, they got the random rolls in there. Then we got like two new destinations. And then we've got this Forsaken subclasses, which were a new introduction of like nine more ways to play this game. Mm-hmm. And Shadowkeep, I love like this year's narrative stuff in theory, depending on how the payoff yeah. is, which I'm waiting for, has mm-hmm. potential to be freaking has amazing. Potential, yeah. like pyramid no ships, like inter- the- walk in on the Shadowkeep, I'm like, holy crap, that's yeah. the pyramid that's ship. Been oh the my positive. God. Going yeah. inside there, having that happen, Garden of Salvation, mm-hmm. talking to yourself. Mm-hmm. Spoilers already, but yeah, that that's fine. Yeah, but on. it's like, mm-hmm. that stuff's been quite cool, and I've enjoyed that. But on the other side, like, when you say raid weapons haven't been that fun, they've been steering away from pinnacle weapons to rituals. Now we're going to pursuits and all of those mm-hmm. other things. We're steering away from what incentivizes us to play the game. And at some right. point, this isn't this isn't meant to be it. The story is cool. But you got to yeah. have the reason for me to play to experience the story. Because I want to experience ding, the story, ding, ding. but I want to have fun while I do it. Ding, and as what ding, you guys ding. were talking about on swords, I will honestly say I've used a sword more this season than I yeah. ever have. Now, I know the changes screwed World Line Zero. I get that for the right. speedrunning community. But also, mm-hmm. I can do 50% of damage by myself with a certain build. And mm-hmm. again, when you talk about the mods for the artifact. Like that one this season, both Sword Scavenger being enhanced... And then the one where, like, if you equip a sword, you take less damage, and yeah. it costs six yeah. energy. That is a perfect risk reward. Normally, I will say those mm-hmm. things are expensive, but if I'm going to run yeah. heavy sword, yeah. I got to be up close in general. I should probably mm-hmm. take less damage yeah. if I'm in there. And that's one of those, like, that's one of the first times I want that thing reissued because that yeah, makes I swords like fun. That I'm makes worried swords about swords fun. next season. Yeah, yeah swords yeah. are going to yeah. be like. Psh- Scavenger is gone. Mm-hmm. The perks so I can mm-hmm. survive more is gone. The infinite mm-hmm. swinging animation helps for damage because you can use them yeah. more, especially with like relentless mm-hmm. strikes. But again, if they take away the swords that have relentless strikes and they sunset those and they get rid of that, then you have your ammo coming up and again and scavengers yeah. not. It's just this like, yeah. So I wanted to yeah. say that, but I was like, I love how much I've used swords this season. It does yeah. suck. It screwed the speed running community, but the functionality of swords for me has actually been more fun for the average player. So that's one of those to where I understand the community being screwed and that does kind of suck, but the Mm -hmm. way that works for the rest of the game has actually been kind of cool. So I get Mm -hmm. both sides of that one, but I also wanted to say it's like what they did to swords for me was actually a lot of fun. So, Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Look, we got got to see how this thing plays out. In fairness, you know, again, I, I try to be fair with context. There's still stuff we still don't know that should be introduced. We could just hope, you know what I'm saying, that, that our, our fears and, and things that we're concerned about is also paid attention to with the introduction of these new things. And hopefully we can sit there and go, oh, now I see why this tribe, they did X, Y, and Z because this was happening and this way. And they just didn't, they shouldn't speak about smoke, smoke on it, but they, you know, they just didn't at the time. So that's what I got, man. That's what I got. Hopefully, chat, you guys staying with us, man. Sorry about that. Yeah, I know we were rocking. Uh, it's been, it's been like, yo, a we long love y'all. Run. We, we yeah. try to stay today. <laughs> we went hashtag long point, but uh, Teddy, point. you got anything else for this? I know we've like belabored every point to death. You got anything yeah. else you want to add while you're here? Mm-hmm. Um, I am optimistic to an extent, but they have a uh, again. They have this track record of like, there's always a but, <laughs> and. Okay. Or or monkey, it's the, the monkey pop. Yeah. Like the, have you guys, seen, have you guys seen How I Met Your Mother? Yes. And where's they're the like, butt? where's the poop, Robin? Where's the poop? Yeah. 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 Uh, that's a good show, by the way. Good show. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. it's just there's always there's always like a catch. And yeah, yeah. that's what worries me. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I I was so upset at first. And then talking to my friends and, and other people about it, I, I just kind of was like, you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm just going to let them figure it out. Yeah, and if yeah. if it's not fun, it's not fun. Yeah. I'm still gonna play the game. I'll be mm-hmm. vocal about it, mm-hmm. be respectful, obviously. Um, you know, people the people that are harassing the devs online, I think yeah, not sure. yeah. Ter- that's, terrible human beings. That's I don't horrible. care if you don't. Uh, there are yeah, there are other yeah. games. Yeah, they 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 are they are normal people just like you and I. Um, mm-hmm. Don't do that. That's like really exactly. bad. Um, yep. But it. <sighs> Destiny is a very unique <laughs> game. It's a very unique game, and. I think it could benefit from like 
a, co- a game that would bring competition because yes. for the most part, Destiny has been unchallenged in they this space. Survive. They survived. Um, they've they've knocked out all. Like there's like, nothing in the space that they can compete with. Have, have, none have survived. Yeah. Everybody has bent the knee. <laughs> division Division One Divisions. was supposed to be the Destiny killer, right? Killer? And then and then Anthem. you know they they may have had a bunch of screw ups. Anthem flopped. I guess you could say maybe Warframe, Warframe. kind of scratches that same edge. Borderlands to a certain extent, extent. also kind of. Uh, scratches mm-hmm. it, but no game has really come close to what Destiny's achieved. And mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> and, Dog uh, Flex on it's, <laughs> Damn it's, on. You, you gotta give him credit where credit's due. I've, I've actually recently, in the last no, two I months, credit. I've been I've been watching a bunch of the GDC uh, talks where Bungie mm-hmm. has talked about uh, different aspects of Destiny over the years, and it, also mm-hmm. Halo Reach because it goes far that far back. Yeah. And I, I'm super nerdy like that, and I, I really like that technical stuff. And for me, it, it came from this place of like, I got so frustrated with the game that it was like, all right. I'm technical. I can understand yeah. this stuff. Mm-hmm. Let me go watch a hour, hour and a half video of some Bungie dev explaining how how zones work, or mm-hmm. in Reach they explained how they basically built the networking uh, mm-hmm. infrastructure for that game and how how they figured out the the big problem of like packet latency and different like mm-hmm. communication problems. And it gets like super technical and super in depth. And that's the kind of stuff I like. I understand that yeah. not everyone's into that. No, but I like that too. Just having someone explain that to me, and then even if it was a Destiny One thing or a Halo Reach thing, I could go okay. Some version of this, a better version of this, exists in Destiny, so I can apply that logic to Destiny and go, okay, that's why this doesn't work the way it should work, or that's why mm-hmm. it doesn't function the way that we want it to function, or whatever, right? Like, yeah. there's a bunch of different explanations for it, and I, that kind of helped me a little bit and gave me a little more faith. Mm-hmm. And there's just, but then all this stuff happened with this season, and that kind of just <laughs> put like a big, a big damper on it. Uh, that, that frustration actually came from the trials issue. Yeah, I think yeah. I think is why I, I started looking that stuff up, but. Um, no, just to close it off, like it's Destiny. Destiny goes through these cycles. Mm-hmm. It, it happens. Uh, they're gonna release a trailer in like a week or two or yep. something, and we're gonna, we're gonna be we're gonna, right there. Yeah, we're gonna forget about <laughs> we everything. We're gonna be right there. Yep. It, it always happens. They make really hype trailers, and yep. I'm guilty of it. Where I see it, I'm like, oh, the eye candy. Like, I I'm can't excited now. Oh, the um, last the last song in the um, trailer for Season of the Worthy. I literally looked up the band, looked what it's from. They just have, like, epic music. I've, like, listened to that randomly now. It's like, so yeah, no, the, whoever makes their trailers, the marketing team is good. Pay, who, pay them and whatever they need because they're worth it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. They that, do a fantastic that, that, job. That team can't get fired. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so other than that, no, that's, you know, but uh, it's been good. There's been a lot of good discussion, so. Hello, this is dope. Yeah, well, uh, we can work on wrapping this up. Chat, you guys have been amazing. Hang tight, yeah, guys. I do want to raid somebody on, on stream yes. after this, so I'm going to send you guys over to send some love. So don't bail on us yet. At least send some love. Blow it up for them. So, but yeah. before we do, uh, we're going to wrap our site up. So, Teddy, uh, where they can find you uh, to get your thoughts, opinions, and, of course, your knowledge of the world of Destiny. You'll have opinions out there. Where can they find you, sir? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Teasing Teddy. It is T E A S I N G T E D D Y, all one word. Uh, I was streaming a little bit in January and February, oh. then I got then the pandemic happened and I got super yeah. busy. Um, so you can find me on Twitch also at Teasing Teddy, but nice. uh, I'm, I'd pro- I'm probably not going to stream very often, mm-hmm. uh, especially with all the game announcements coming up here. Uh, work's about to kick up for me, so mm-hmm. um, we got you just but, at the right uh, time. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, we got you before. But yeah. you, you can you can always tweet at me on Twitter. I'm usually pretty good at responding about things. Just mm-hmm. I ask you to be respectful. Uh, if yes. you're not, I will belittle you in some way because. <laughs> Uh, I have a de- I, I've got a degree in logic, so like uh, I'm, I'm not gonna I remove all emotion from the yeah. human argument. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you, you know, you can tweet at me, you can message me. I'm always down to talk about Destiny. It's, my Twitter is mostly just Destiny stuff and like me making memes of or <laughs> tweeting memes to people that I work with or know. So yeah, um, you know. But thank you for having me. It's been uh, oh, it's been another fun. good podcast. So always and it's an fun. interesting time for Destiny. Indeed. Yep, we've mm-hmm. been through a few of these. Cognito, yes. what else you got, sir? What yeah, are you man. doing this weekend since we're in the weekend mm-hmm. now? Yeah, man. Look, man, you already know Iron Law Podcast on um, Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern. No, no guest this week. Just going to be talking about the latest stuff in the gaming community, all the stuff that's going on, delays and the next generation hype and SSDs and thorough put speeds and IO. And so if you want to get technical <laughs> and also. Oh, God, I can't people. wait till we get more info on that stuff. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, so we get we're gonna talk about yeah we're gonna talk about that stuff soon. And again, if you can't catch it on YouTube, we are also uh, multi-streaming. So on our Iron Law Podcast, the same account here on Twitch, you can catch us there live. Really appreciate the support, and of course, LordsOfGaming.net, man. You guys have been amazing with that support for the site. We've been we've been really picking up, 
And uh, again, if you're into statues, please check out my brother King David. King of statues, man. He's got an amazing... If you're into like... Marvel Comics, DC Comics, uh, you know, cartoons, stuff like that. He's got an amazing Chitara t- statue from Thundercats that I'm going crazy. So check that out on the Iron Law Podcast YouTube, man. And uh, yeah, man. And last thing I want to say, I know we, we talked that noise about Destiny. is just, look, I'm in this place now where it's like, I'm not going to complain. If I'm not happy, I'm literally killing my backlog. I'm proud of myself right now. I am killing my backlog. So, you know, when they do something good that I like, I'm, I jump right back in. And hopefully that'll be the transitionary piece going in, you know, to the next season. So that's what I got on that. But, um, E-Man, what's going on with you, brother? Yeah, uh, I am like three missions away from finishing Neo. I know the final boss of all of those mm-hmm. games is going to be a brutal one. So stay tuned on mm-hmm. Twitch for me working on that one. I mm-hmm. don't honestly know, and I'm probably going to have to ask these two afterwards if I can squeeze Final Fantasy between, but as work's picking up for me, <laughs> I might have to just kind of chill, yeah. honestly. Yeah, I was like, I'm going to probably have to chill, wait for the new season, then The Last of Us, mm-hmm. so that stuff will be coming. But you guys know we're here on Twitch. If you catch this in audio form, find all of these awesome people. Uh, find them on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Find them on Twitch. Yeah. Go find Iron Lord's podcast. They're live uh sunday mornings are amazing mm-hmm. it's a great way to mm-hmm. spend a couple hours just chill leave them that little earbud in and you're good to go <laughs> uh but for me as well on youtube uh you know like 2500 away from 50k on subs you guys have been Woo! awesome Let's like go. That, that's that's a big threshold that i can't wait to uh, get through so mm-hmm. that's all i got um when we get done with the guys we are also going to go raid a guy that i'm going to work on getting on the podcast his name is amaze and Maybe. if you've ever had seen him like respond to a big raid, he will literally freestyle rap like for a couple minutes. Oh, we're gonna get some it bars. Is, Let's so, go. Yeah, it's, he's <laughs> awesome. So go follow him. Um, it's U H. It's weirdly spelled, but it's U H M A A Y Y Z E. So that's who we're gonna raid after this one. Uh, and just Teddy, we're gonna do the the last word sign off here again as well. Salute. So yes, for salute. episode one hundred four, May twenty second, you guys have all been amazing. Thank you, chat. Thank you, Teddy. It has been a pleasure having you. Cognito, of course, the co-host with the co-most. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, We'll see you guys very soon. And it has been the last word.